Please bow with me. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day, and we thank you for the privilege of living in Manatee County. Thank you for these great servants who do their very best to make this community a wonderful place to live, work, and play. As they go through their deliberations today, we ask that you give them wisdom, patience, and guidance, that they would do what's truly right for our entire community. Thank you again for this day, and thank you for giving us the privilege to serve. In Christ's name I pray, amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Next, if Mrs. DePaul would read in changes and announcements to today's agenda. Good morning, commissioners. Um, so under uh, updates from July 21st, 2023, citizen comments and future agenda items, written correspondence from Diana Adams, Mike Adams, and Corey Wright were submitted. Under changes to consent, property management, item 58, rescind and terminate donation agreement between the University of South Florida Board of Trustees in Manatee County for property located near the Crosley Estate in Manatee County, District 4. This item was added to the agenda. Under Port Authority, the Port Authority meeting from July 25th, 2023 was canceled due to no agenda items requiring immediate approval. Under advertised public hearings, presentations upon request, item 76 under Development Services Ordinance 23-94, establishing the South Point of Manatee County Community Development District. This item was updated to include the affidavit of publication. Under regular agenda, item 82 under development services, uh, adoption of resolution R23-088 to convey county-owned property located at 4410 66th Street West in Bradenton for affordable veterans housing development to Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation, Inc. and the execution of the land use restriction agreement and conveyance deed. This item was deleted from the agenda. Under property management, item 83, execution of contract for sale and purchase from the Manatee County Mosquito Control District, uh, formerly known as the Board of Commissioners of the Manatee County Anti-Mosquito District, for the property located at 2317 2nd Avenue West, Palmetto, and adoption of budget amendment resolution B23-125. This item was updated to include written correspondence from Glenn Jibalina. And then under Commissioner Agenda and Comments, under Commissioner Cruz, item 84, update on Manatee County Animal Welfare. This item was updated to include written correspondence from various commenters. Item 85, miscellaneous development services timeline updates. The agenda item was added. And item 86, Manatee County agenda and minute improvements. This item was added to the agenda. Then update memo dated July 24th, 2023, under awards, presentations, and proclamations. Um, a presentation item three, presentation from the Jewish Family and Children's Service of the Suncoast, Inc. on the Ignite Fatherhood program was updated with a PowerPoint presentation. Under changes to consent agenda, uh, public works, item 63, execution of alternative wastewater connection agreement with Four Star Real Estate Group, Inc. for Rutland Plan Development Phase 1. This item was added to the agenda. And then this morning there was another update. Um, we Item number 83, under development services, um, under presentations, I'm sorry, under regular agenda, approval and execution of gap loan agreements between Manatee County and 920 Manatee Associates, LLC, for 920 Manatee, the project, 137 unit mixed use multifamily attainable housing development located at 920 Manatee Avenue West. This item was moved to consent agenda. And that concludes the updates. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioners, are there any items you would like removed from today's consent agenda? Item 21. Ballard, 21. Anyone else? Okay. A few notable fo folks in the audience today Mayor Gene Brown. Representative Will Robinson and Senator Jim Boyd are here today. If everybody give them a round of applause. And I think I know why they're here. So I'm going to ask Commissioner Mike Ron and Commissioner Vanessa Baugh to please step down to the podium now. What? Go to the podium. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, everyone here in chambers today. Um, today is, uh, I'm going to have to read off the script for one time in my life. I'm going to stay on script because if I don't, I'll probably lose it. But um, I wanted to thank Commissioner Baugh for being in here today and tell her thank you for everything she's done for me. She's a friend, a mentor, 
a great person, um, a leader, and I just appreciate everything she's done for me personally. I just thank you, and I love you. Thank you. Since November of 2012, Commissioner Vanessa Baugh has been admired and trusted leader of this board, revered for taking a hardline stance on tax increases and supporting her constituents in East County and in Lakewood Ranch. Vanessa has always helped to give a voice to her community. That voice has helped guide us through times of crisis from Piney Point to recent hurricanes. We will, will no longer be heard from the dais after today. Her ability to shape the mission and direction of this board will never be forgotten or duplicated. As the current board continues that mission, her legacy of leadership will, rem will remain a guiding force for the current board and future boards to follow. Finally, we look, at, look to her capstone of her career in public service with the grand opening of the Lakewood Ranch Library later this year as a testament to her dedication and resolve in moving Mantee County forward. I'm sure other commissioners will have a lot to say about your career. I just want to, start, I just want to say thank you so much for what you've done for all of us. Thank you. Well, y'all really know how to throw a party. Um, it's bittersweet today for me. I have a husband that uh, it makes you realize how important family is. Nothing comes before family. And uh, he's got quite a road in front of him, and I'm going to be there by his side every step. Um, it has been an honor for me to represent District 5, and to be a part of this government. Um, I've had great people that I've been able to work with, besides not just the commission, but so many others. And there's so many things that I could say, and, and, but I don't want to waste time. You've got quite an agenda today. So um, thank you for this. It means a lot. Um, and I'll miss you all. Thank you. And right here, three, two, one, and three, two, one.
Okay. Next, we're going to go to Senator Jim Boyd, who is here with a legislative update. Sir? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I could take just a second of personal privilege and thank uh, Commissioner Baugh. I won't be long, but thank you so much for your leadership, for your always uh, availability and willingness to work with us. I can tell you, uh, we here, Representative Robinson and I hear from all of y'all, uh, usually quite a bit, which is a good thing, but I think Vanessa probably tops most of you in interactions and phone calls and what about this and can you help us with that? So uh, we'll miss you uh, from the community service point of view, but uh, God bless you and Don for what you're taking on and, and staying by his side. I, there is no more important job than that. So I respect you and admire you for that, but we'll miss you here. No, you can't. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, many of you know that my husband had an emergency situation go on in June, and he ended up needing to be transferred up to the Shands in, in Gainesville. And um, Jim was most helpful. I called him, and I mean, he was on it. Within 30, 45 minutes, it was done. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you did. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. And that's one thing that uh, Representative Robinson and I have the privilege and pleasure of doing. And anyone in our community that has a need that is not perhaps being met here, and we have a lot of ways to meet needs in our community, but we do have resources across the state, too, that can help. So we get calls from constituents, from friends, and the like. So uh, always happy to uh, offer that service to anyone in, in our community because it can make a big difference. And I hope and trust in Don's situation it did make a difference. So all the best. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be as brief as I can be because um, you do have a fairly robust agenda. Um, Representative Robinson and I were talking right before we started, and he goes, um, you're speaking today. He said, I didn't get invited. I said, I didn't either. I just kind of forced my way onto the agenda. So um, maybe that should be a lesson to him. But I'm sure you'll hear from him uh, at some point in the future. And also a lot of what we do uh, we work together. We have a great delegation here in Manatee County, and not just Representative Robinson, but uh, Representative Gregory and, and Senator Gruters as well. Uh, we have a, a very, very strong, um, and Beltran is new to our uh, delegation from uh, South Hillsboro. So we have a very strong delegation, and I think we're viewed as a strong delegation uh, across the legislature. Uh, several things I worked on. I'm just going to hit the <clears throat> the highlights uh, in that it hopefully will make some difference for four Floridians. We had a big problem with catalytic converter theft, and believe it or not, it became quite a thing, and it was going, uh, it's uh, spread across the nation. So we put legislation in place to get at that. We also put, uh, uh, got a bill through, and the governor signed on my, my safe Florida home, and that gives Floridians money and grant money to harden their homes. Uh, and it was, we had it in place after the hurricane. It was specific to Southwest Florida. Now we've uh, spread that across the state. So anywhere in Florida is eligible and that's a great program. We did some seagrass restoration legislation, which as you know, is very important and critical to our community. Also telehealth, audio telehealth. We implemented that, a governor's order during the uh, pandemic, but it was expired, it expired, but it gives Floridians that may not have access to broadband or the ability to get to a doctor uh, for Zoom calls or, or in-person in visits. It gives them the ability to uh, communicate with their doctor uh, in that regard. And also another bill has been passionate, I've been passionate about, as you know, through the years, uh, the opioid problem, and uh, it hasn't gone away and we have to keep fighting it. And uh, one of the things that happened this year, and we're getting, uh, as you well know, about $3.2 billion in, in money to help Florida fight this problem. But we put a bill in place um, that allows Narcan, the opioid antagonist, to be in college dorms and residence halls. So if somebody uh, is uh, found with, uh, that had an overdose, they're right there and uh, they're able to administer that and save lives. And, and we do know it saves lives. Believe it or not, I did get one bill vetoed by the governor. Um, we, uh, we thought we were good, but it was on a contract liability bill for the state of Florida. So I want to mention that everything we work on I mentioned that only to say everything we work on uh, doesn't uh, doesn't get uh, all the way across the finish line. Uh, overall, though, the session, I think, was a very productive session for Florida. We uh, dealt with affordable housing, storm recovery, infrastructure, education. Um, it's a $117 billion budget, and that's because of the robust economy that we have in Florida. Uh, Florida is 
unlike any other state in the nation, I believe. People want to live here, work here, and play here, and uh, the revenues are going up as a result of it. But it's our responsibility not just to find ways to spend that $117 billion. We put uh, almost $11 billion in reserves. We also uh, brought back to the taxpayers $2.7 billion in tax relief, various tax relief uh, uh, mechanisms that you've seen. Some are the school tax holidays uh, that are going on right now, some permanent tax relief measures on some sale ta sales tax ex exemptions, also um, some property tax relief with specific in, uh, emphasis on disabled veterans, their surviving spouses, and the surviving spouses of law enforcement officers. Um, Live Local Act, you heard a lot about. That was our affordable housing bill. Thank you, Commissioner Cruz, for engaging with us on that. We, uh, we talked, and uh, as you all know and have worked, you er all have different areas of uh, you do everything, but you also have specific areas you're interested in. Of course, that's one that the commissioner has been engaged and involved in, and he worked very closely with Senator Kaladiud, who ran the bill, and I know that's going to do great things for Floridians. We still have a ways to go, but I, I know that will make a big difference. Um, the other, uh, I think, so many significant things, but one of the significant things that we passed was the um, education funding for children, so money follows the child um, wherever they go to school, whether it's public school, private school, charter school, virtual school, um, home school, wherever they go, the money follows them. And, you know, we got a lot of uh, debate on that issue, uh, but it boils down to this for me. It, um, we have this sad system of uh, what ends up being generational poverty because kids can't get out of a failing school and they get stuck in a school because of their zip code or their family circumstances, and ultimately their education is not what it could or should be and not what would allow them to have a productive life. So I'm really excited that we were able to, to do this, and, and again, it does nothing to change the complexion of our public school system. I want to be clear. It just adds options <clears throat> excuse me, for parents to be able to uh, offer their children. And I'll kind of try to wrap up because there's so much we did. Um, we expanded the wild, fire, about $850 million to expand the wildlife corridor. You know, that's a big thing for Florida because a lot of people come here for, uh, for our you know, outdoors activities. And the wildlife corridor, while our beaches and everything are, are beautiful, interior state of Florida is, is just as beautiful in another way. And this allows for connectivity of paths and, and uh, some of the parks to, uh, for guests and Floridians to, to uh, uh, enjoy. We had uh, $3.7 in hurricane recovery. Um, we increased teacher pay in the public school system of about $252 million. Um, just hitting some of that, we had some mental health and substance abuse services, about $30 million there, uh, a rural infrastructure fund. Um, so we did a lot, of, a lot of things. And I will tell you, in Manatee County, um, in our, or excuse me, my Senate district, of which uh, Representative Robinson was definitely a part of this, because as you all know, in this process, it takes three to tango the House and the Senate, and then the governor has to agree with us. But uh, we brought home in my Senate district a little over $100 million in projects. Uh, we had $120 million that had gone through the governor, and he clipped about $20 million out of it, which, I, you know, that's okay. $100 million <laughs> is a lot of money. And um, one of our jobs with taxpayers' money is to go up and try to secure funding for things that are important to our community that you don't have, you know, perhaps the resources or the ability to do and other other uh, commissions and uh, city governments across the state. So very proud, and there's a long list of those things. If you want them, we will make sure we get them to you. But um, very proud of what we were able to bring back to our community. And I want to, I do want to give my colleague, Representative Robinson and Representative Gregory, a due credit because we work a lot of these together. He had some priorities that uh, were his alone. I had some that were mine alone. We try to help each other, and uh, I think we do a very good job of that, and the proof is in the pudding. So. Um, on balance, it was, a, I think, a very good session. Um, next year, we go back, or this year, we go back a little earlier, as you recall. We start committees in October, and so then we go through October, November, and a little bit in December, and then session starts this year early, January uh, and February of 2024. So we'll be back serving. I'll be looking forward, Chairman, uh, to working with you and your commissioners on uh, the agenda that's important to Manatee County. And, um, you know, we did, we did some infrastructure funding and some projects that were very important, but we're going to try to uh, keep doing what we can. And, and I will say in closing, um, I don't know how long 
you know, this economy is going to last. I hope it'll last a long time. There's signs that, you know, it won't dip dramatically, but it might level out at some point. But we ought to take advantage of that while we can. And A, giving money back to taxpayers, putting money in reserves, and financially rated, Florida is one of the best in the country, if not the best. So uh, we're in very good shape as a state. We continue. We hope to continue that uh, that momentum, and we want to work with you all on what's important. So I could say a lot more. You probably don't want me to, so I won't. But uh, thank you for your for your uh, partnership with us and the way you work with us on getting things done because it matters to our community, and we all serve the same constituents. So thank you very much. Thanks, Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator. Commissioner Ballard. Senator, thank you so much for for how well you you, you work with Manatee County for everything that that you've done uh, to to assist the county with with our big infrastructure projects. It's been truly amazing, and also just. Personally, I want to thank you for your commitment to the uh, opioid issue. I mean, Manatee County has truly been devastated by the opioid epidemic, and so knowing that that is uh, an issue that's on your heart and that you're championing uh, is is really, really important. So uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you, Commissioner. And the entire uh, the entire delegation, for sure. Thank you. May I just mention one quick yes. thing on that. Uh, I think it's important to note. Uh, the president of the Senate had a, a pick. You know, we established a statewide opioid council to deal with uh, the oversight of the monies and the like. And she called and asked who I would like to appoint to that council. I talked to Sheriff Wells, and um, we put Major Todd Shear. Uh, he agreed, of course, and we put him on that council. So I think it's significant that we have somebody of in our sheriff's department of that level of leadership that will interact with his colleagues around the state to uh, make a difference as we continue this fight, because sadly, the fight is not going away. We have to, we just have to give it everything we can. Thank, thank you. you, sir. I would say more, but no. my voice won't allow me, but thank you very much. We do appreciate all you do. Yeah, of course. Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna move on to presentation of the Employee of the Month, which is Paige Eddins from Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Mrs. Corton DePaul, Deputy County Administrator, and Mr. Clegg, Molly White, Deputy Director of Sports and Leisure Services. Um, it's an honor to be here today to acknowledge and celebrate one of our staff members in Sports and Leisure, Ms. Paige Eddins. Paige has been with the county for about seven and a half years in our Athletics and Camps Division. And Paige, this is so well deserved. Um, many of our staff members are behind you today to help celebrate, um, to acknowledge that I truly don't think, no matter the circumstances, I've ever seen you have a bad day. Um, your hard work and dedication enables our citizens to have the services they need. Your problem solved to always try and make requests be met, and you're always looking for solutions. So before I pass it off to Marcus Francis, I just want to say thank you for being a class act, top notch, and truly stellar employee. Congratulations. Uh, good morning, commissioners, fellow co-workers, and members of the community. My name is Marcus Francis, and I am the Athletics and Camps Manager for Sports and Leisure Services Department. I want to thank you and the Employee Recognition Com Committee for acknowledging Paige Eddins as July 2023 Employee of the Month. Paige Eddins, Recreation Coordinator 3, is the scheduling coordinator for the Sports and, Sports and Leisure Services Department. She coordinates field use for users such as local travel teams, Little League, and Pop Warner football programs, middle and high school sports teams, as well as countywide tournaments. When she finds a, spare, a few spare minutes, she jumps in to assist her coworkers, coach youth basketball, officiate kickball, and monitor a few hundred summer camp children on the playground, in the pool, and on field trips. Paige not only sets the bar, she raises it. Paige, we are consistently amazed by your performance, your work ethic, your dedication, and your commitment to not only me, your coworkers, but also your community, and I believe that it is second to none. I'd like to share a few quotes given by some of our area sports uh, leaders over the, the past few months. Um, Braden River Little League president, Paige always has a smile on her face and a pleasantness in, to her voice. She's a sweet person and is always willing to help. Miss Manatee softball president, Paige is amazing. She's kind and responsive and always does her best to take care of us. 
one of our local athletic directors at one of our school local schools here. Uh, thank you again for always being awesome and flexible. You have been wonderful this year, and I appreciate it greatly. Uh, one of our many travel ball coaches. Uh, thanks very much for the help. This was a shockingly painless process, and I'm very grateful for your assistance. You make the process easy. Uh, and one of our uh, tournament directors, I traveled the state working with many athletic departments, and Paige is simply the best. It is clear that you are appreciated by not only me, your coworkers, but so many members of our community. Thank you for all that you do. And at this time, we'd like to congratulate and acknowledge the tremendous success you've achieved. Congrats, Paige, July 2023 Employee of the Month. Good morning, um, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clegg. Uh, just want to uh, thank you for the Employee of the Month Award. Um, it's been an honor the past couple weeks. Uh, a lot of people have reached out. Um, yeah, it's just been an honor. Um, thank you, Molly White, our Deputy Director. Um, uh, she's been in my corner, same with Marcus Francis. We've worked many years together. Um, I appreciate the kind words, uh, nice speech. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you, employee recognition team. Uh, I was on the committee for uh, many years on that team, uh, and you guys got me good, so I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it, and thanks again. Thank you, Paige. Uh, commissioners, Commissioner Ron. Paige, thank you so much. I mean, you do such a great job there. All I want to know is, can you establish an adult dodgeball league? I mean, no, not really. Um, but thank you so much, and it's, it, you've, you work hard, and you've well-earned, well-deserved, so thank you for everything you do over in Parks and Rec. Thank you so much. <laughs> Coming from the guy with one arm, he wants a dodgeball league. I think Paige, that's a great idea. Thank you so much for everything you do. We really appreciate you. I've seen you in action out of GT Bray a couple of times. You do a great job there. You're always hustling and going somewhere fast. Um, <laughs> We're going to have Parks and Rec stay right where they are because this is also Parks and Recreation Month in Manatee County. And Commissioner Ballard is going to come down and present that proclamation. So this is really excellent timing. So I couldn't have done this any better. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead with the proclamation. Whereas our parks and recreation are an integral part of communities and are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, as well as improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. Whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction, and whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors, Whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and so does Manatee County recognize the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that the month of July 2023 shall be known, designated, and set aside as Parks and Recreation Month in Manatee County, Florida, adopted with a quorum present and voting this 25th day of July 2023, Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County, Florida. It's signed by our chairperson and attested by Angelina Coloniso, Clerk of the Circuit Court. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much, Molly. Thank you. Just real quick, I just want to thank you all for your continued support with our programs and our initiatives. Um, I, as the proclamation states, um, you recognize the need, and it's uh, truly appreciated that you also recognize the growth and the awareness of keeping their, our service levels where they need to be to reach all of our residents and our growing county. Um, I'm going to pass it off to our Recreation Division Manager, um, Allison Minardi, and she's going to give you a little more kind of a snapshot of our reach in the county and our programming. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. 
Mr. Paul and Mr. Clegg. My name is Allison Minardi. I am the Recreation Division Manager for the Sports and Leisure Department. And I'm just here to highlight the important work that this department does by providing access to community health, both at our indoor recreation centers and at our parks and beaches. This team works passionately every day to provide a safe and um, a safe and fun environment where youth and adults alike can come to play either organized sports or have free play. We program and maintain over 40 parks countywide, including almost 80 athletic fields, with over 65 playgrounds, all for community use. Our parks have hosted nearly 65 tournaments this year, with over 15,000 athletic field reservations, mostly done by Paige. <laughs> Our youth and adult athletic programming have reached over 470,000 registrations this year alone. Our main recreation facility, GT Bray, operates eight clay tennis courts and 24 pickleball courts, all within our CV Walton Center. We've had over 23,000 pickleball drop-ins this year alone, and over 16,000 recreational day passes this year alone. Manatee County, um, the, CV Vault, uh, the CV Walton Center has been selected to host world-renowned pickleball tournaments, positioning Manatee County as a premier location for travel and pickleball as well. Um, we host over 65 uh, group fitness classes a week where members come to share their uh, love of movement. And last but certainly not least, our camps provide summer care for our community youth with almost 400 kids in our east and west campuses for our summer blast camp and nearly 100 additional in our specialty camps. Recreation is the heart of our community. It impacts the older populations, the younger, the active, and the soon to be more active. We have a phenomenal team, and I am honored here to accept that July be proclaimed Parks and Recreation Month, because it's not only a time to encourage people to enjoy the outdoors and be more active, but it's also an appropriate time to bring awareness to our public lands, and the parks professionals that make Manatee County the perfect place to work, live, and play. That was a mouthful, well said. All right, we have one last presentation, which is the presentation from the Jewish Family and Children's Coalition of the Sun Coast on the Ignite Fatherhood Program. Oh, all in favor of approving proclamations. Oh, I need a motion, please. It's already on the board, Ron. We have a motion by Commissioner Ron, a second by Commissioner Bearden to approve proclamations. You can cast your votes now. <coughs> Passes seven to zero. Okay. Sir, I apologize. A little housekeeping. No, sir, not a problem at all. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Paul, County Attorney Clegg, Representative Robinson, Senator Boyd, who just left. My, good morning. My name is Edwin Robinson. I'm the senior program facilitator for the Ignite Fatherhood Program at Jewish Family and Children's Services of the Sun Coast. And I am coming today asking for your support. And here's why. It was the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham that said that a good father is one of the most unsung unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. And that is where we come, that is where we come in, is to bring awareness and to bring back the impact of fathers in our community and the communities that we serve. So here's what research says about fathers. It says that men who are engaged in their family life with their kids are more likely to have a job. They're more likely to pay taxes. They are fathers who have a positive involvement in their neighborhoods and more likely to engage in community service. It also says that those fathers who report a close connections with their kids have a better quality of life. They're happier, they're healthier, they live longer. They have fewer mental, mental and physical health problems because they are taking care of themselves. More importantly, and appropriate to this venue, they are, most, they are least likely to abuse drugs, such as the opioid crisis that we heard of previously, and they are more productive at work. 
because father is spelled F-A-T-H-E-R, not A-T-M. Most fathers aspire to success, not just as a financial provider and career climber, but they want to be involved, loving fathers in the home. The challenge is trying to find a balance with that. How do I become a responsible employee at work and balance that out with how am I to be an engaged father or father figure at home? And I think, this is, I think this is where JFCS comes to meet the challenge. We're presenting, we're presenting throughout Manatee County the Ignite Professional Development Series. The series is a unique opportunity to fa for fathers to learn time-honored fatherhood skills that are transferable to their lives in the workplace, whether they work in public administration or whether they work in public works. Things like stress and calming, thing, uh, areas like communication styles and strategies. Sometimes it's not just what you say, it's also a little bit about how you say it. We talk about how to make your case at work, whether it's for a brand new proposal, or whether to get that raise from your supervisor. We look at commitment in both the home and the workplace and looking at the road ahead. How do they help set goals? These are just a few of the topics that we cover. JFCS and the IGNITE program, we are one of the only programs within Saracen and Manatee County to participate in a five-year federally, federally funded research grant through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And because of this funding, we're able to offer our professional development series as well as our 12-week community workshops, I'm going to say this really clear, free of charge to participants. One more time, free of charge to all participants. Doing a little bit of homework for, for this presentation, and here's where I want to see some of your support. This falls under your value system of ACE, accountability, civility, and ethics. Well, we have a way to talk about accountability, civility, and ethics, and they are part of our signature program called the three keys. So when we talk about accountability, it's also do your part, being able to engage in all types of relationships with commitment and creativity in a mindful and active way. When it comes to civility, we're talking about our key of make it safe to connect. That means physically and emotionally protecting our children, our coworkers, and our community. It's about what we do and about what we say and about how we interact. And then when it comes to ethics, that's our key that, that's called decide, don't slide. It is being intentional about the good choices that we make both at home and in the workplace, big and small, all day, every day. So where does this come in with the board? Here's what, I'm, here's what we are asking. We are asking that you come and learn a little bit more about our program and help promote our professional development series throughout Manatee County and, through, and throughout the departments that you serve. Our sister program, REACH, which is an acronym for Restoring Empowerment and Choosing Hope, it's our Relationship Enhancement Program, is already working in Charlotte County. We've made this presentation to the Charlotte County Commission, but we would like to offer these services to Manatee County and to the departments in Manatee County. We, what we'd like to do is provide these is provide this workshop in a six week one hour virtual format. I like to refer to it as lessons over lunch. Um, they have the opportunity to enjoy lunch in a virtual setting in their offices or in their break rooms while participating in the program over discussions as we go over some of these concepts that I've mentioned and a few more. But most importantly, we would like for Manatee County to join JFCS as community partners to present this program on a rotating basis to folks in Manatee County. So what I'm asking today from the County Commission is to help us promote, provide, present, and participate. 
because I believe if Manatee County is going to be a great place to work, live, and play, it also should be a great place where fathers can thrive and help raise their children. That is my presentation. Thank you so much. That was an excellent presentation. Mr. Chairman, I have also, I also have some folders here that I did not get before the meeting started. But, uh, Q, Q will but take there those. is a meet, there is then a I think you'll have, all of you. you'll have some Q&A from commissioners. We'll start with Commissioner Ballard. So I just want to start by saying that uh, I, I agree <laughs> very strongly with your, with, with your assertion that, that fathers matter, and they matter so much, uh, both, both for the dads themselves and, and for the families. Uh, I was a child welfare attorney for, for several years, and I saw that when the fathers were engaged and involved, the entire uh, process uh, went better. And one of the things that we actually had, had difficulty with was finding programs that were specifically geared to fatherhood for parenting. So this is, uh, this is encouraging and exciting to see. Um, and I guess my, my question would be, on your last slide, you, you have a couple of things that you want to see Manatee County do. Can you be more specific about exactly what you're looking for from the county for support? So when I, so when I spoke about this program with Acting Administrator Washington, what I was, what I was particularly looking for is, for is for this to be promoted through the departments uh, in Manatee County and for, and for those that were interested to contact us so that we could get a class together. We are working on putting a cohort together. I would love to have a cohort full of just Manatee County employees. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Washington's idea was that essentially employees could sign up if they wanted and they would participate on their lunch hour. Anyone else? All right, great presentation, sir. We are gonna take a quick break here so that we can take care of some technical issues that we're having uh, with our live stream. And when we were on the break, if I were you, I would grab the mayor of Bradenton who's sitting right there and see if you can go Don't present you know to the I city. Don't you know I plan to do that, Mr. That's Chair. right, all right. David, will 10 minutes suffice? 10 minute recess.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Moving right along. I think we have our IT issues resolved. Perfect. So we're going to jump right in to citizen comment on future agenda items. There is a 30-minute time limit on this section, but that's just for this section. At the end of the meeting, if you did not make it into the 30 minutes, then we'll start citizen comment at the very end of the meeting again for those who did not get into this portion of it. I will throw in there that I know a lot of you are here to talk about animal welfare because it's listed on the agenda later, but there's not an actionable item on that, so we won't be holding public comment on it later in the, in the meeting. So if you want to talk about animal welfare, this is your opportunity to do so right now during future agenda items. So two people have signed up. I have Catherine uh, Bridwell and Joyce Jordan have both signed up. So for everyone, we'll, we'll open it up to the, the audience after these two folks who signed up go. And then when I call your name or if you, when you do approach the podium, please state your first name, your last name, your county of residence, and you'll have three minutes to address the board. Ma'am? Kathy Bridwell, Manatee County resident. The night before July 4th, I and 10 other volunteers at the Manatee County Animal Shelter in Palmetto received an email from Jody Fist, Director of Public Safety, that our services were no longer needed. Can you imagine our surprise, grief, and heartbroken reaction to that? We were fired with no forewarning despite the volunteer handbook stating, no volunteers will be terminated until the volunteer has had an opportunity to discuss the reasons for possible dismissal with supervisory staff. Seven, some of us have been volunteers there for over 12 years. I've been a volunteer for five years, devoting three afternoons a week to walking dogs, cleaning kennels and play yards, weekly bringing home a shelter dog for a sleepover and serving as a mentor. In May, I was asked by Sarah Brown, division chief, to participate in a volunteer think tank. My other volunteer activities include having served as both a Manatee and Sarasota County guardian ad litem for over 10 years, a, vo a volunteer at the Manatee Regional Juvenile Detention Center, and a foster parent. The volunteers fired include the primary photographer, the primary Facebook post creator, yard attendants, the management appointed volunteer liaison, and dedicated dog walkers. What possible reason could justify this action that has resulted in dogs sitting in kennels without someone to walk them, photograph them, advertise them, or care for their basic needs? The shelter has never had enough volunteers. This has exasperated the current situation at the shelter and worsened the lives of all 100 dogs that reside there. None of those dogs understand why we're not there. Despite management stating there are hundreds of volunteers, just this past Sunday afternoon, a current volunteer put out a plea that she was the only volunteer at the shelter. Three of us fired were always at the shelter on Sundays. The only thing the dogs know is that we no longer stand in front of their kennels, offering them a reprieve from their anguish. Make no mistake, this decision has caused these dogs to suffer needlessly. Being a shelter volunteer has never been easy. It's a dirty, hot, and demanding job. In the past year, it has been increasingly challenging. We were having days when dogs were only getting out of their kennels once, and for some, not until 2 p.m. On one of those days, the dog I got out had held its elimination for 24 hours. He was beyond frantic. Shortly thereafter, I learned that prospective volunteers were receiving emails from the volunteer coordinator stating their services were not a good fit and to please look elsewhere to serve. Janine Davis, former volunteer coordinator and then animal population manager, has either quit or been fired since our firing, which leads me to believe she has a significant part in our firing and was disciplined for it. I'm thankful the Palmetto Shelter will be moving to the Bradenton Bishops location within two years. However, that move will do nothing to address the current issue of not having enough volunteers. Bishop is not the magic bullet that will address this issue. The problems that are occurring at Palmetto will occur at Bishops. A change in location will not fix that. I respectfully ask that this wrong be undone and that all 11 of us be reinstated. Thank you. And Commissioner Cruz, I appreciate your uh, bringing this as an item on the agenda. Thank you, ma'am. Choice Jordan. So Mrs. Jordan, please state your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to address the board. I do ask that folks attempt to not bring up individual county employees. We would appreciate that. Thank you. Joyce Jordan, Manatee County. Good morning. You all know me. I was here last month thanking you for your assistance at Manatee County Animal Services. Ironically, I'm here today because I have become part of the problem at Manatee County Animal Services. I and 10 other dedicated, devoted volunteers were terminated on July 3rd, 2023. Unfortunately, that was the day before a holiday. 
The shelter is always short-staffed on holidays, so four of us had signed up to volunteer on the 4th. I have been a volunteer dog walker at Manatee County for over 12 years. I have been there longer than all the employees, including Chief Brown, and most of the volunteers except Carol Sabo, who was also terminated on that day. We have seen a lot of changes over the years, most of them not good. Before I moved to Florida, I was a volunteer for Pets on Wheels for 14 years, which is a program where you take your personal dog to the nursing home to visit the residents. The solutions to the problems at Manatee County Animal Welfare is not to fire volunteers. The solution is to fire management. As long as these managers remain in charge, there will be problems at Manatee County Animal Services, no matter if it's at Palmetto or Bishop, because they obviously don't care about the animals. If they did, we would never have been terminated. The dogs miss us and need us. I have mentored more new volunteers than most of the current volunteers in my years over there. I have cleaned kennels, washed dishes, cleaned yards, and done whatever had to be done to ensure the dogs got out of their kennels. My top priority as a volunteer was to see that all the dogs got out of their kennels at least once a day. I wouldn't leave until they all got out, no matter how many hours it took. Employees did not walk the dogs. They just threw them in a yard for five minutes, and that was considered an out. So the number of outs per day was changed to three, which was a big improvement if there were enough volunteers and employees to get them out. That became a problem when we had so many dogs and so few volunteers. I always walked Saturday morning, and I got there early to assist the staff with whatever they needed. It was always something because there weren't enough employees, and every Saturday, even with the temporary workers, we were short-staffed. I questioned why that was happening when we had new employees, temporary employees, and new volunteers, and yet we couldn't get the dogs out faster. We worked as a team and helped them whatever way was needed so the dogs could get out sooner. Now the current volunteers are begging for help because they can't do it without us, but they're afraid to say anything because they're afraid of being fired. I adopted my dog from Manatee County in 2020 and occasionally take another dog home on the holidays or when a hurricane is coming. I would like for all, all 11 of us to be reinstated ASAP. Thank you. So we don't disrupt public meetings. If you do, you'll be removed. Is there anyone else in the public who would like to come forward to speak? Yes, ma'am. So at this point, we're going to open it up to the floor. So if you would like to come forward and address the board on any future agenda item, including uh, animal welfare, this is your opportunity to do so. Ma'am, first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes. Uh, Catherine Walter, Manatee County. I'm very concerned about the mass firings at, of the volunteers at animal welfare. The firings were certainly not in the best interest of the dogs, especially given the extreme heat we're experiencing. It is incomprehensible how the lowest position of volunteers were fired by the public safety department head. What happened to animal welfare's chain of command? Where were all our intermediate employees, especially our volunteer coordinator? Where was animal welfare public relations supervisor or employee? Where was animal welfare's chief? It seems to me if our on-site employees were following their job descriptions, we could have had a more positive outcome, thereby avoiding the firings. In 2014, we paid approximately $45,000 for the matrix study of animal welfare. This study provided us with a comprehensive evaluation of all areas of our shelter. One of the findings pointed to the positive role our volunteers play and the overall well-being of our animals. The firing of volunteers does not follow the recommendations in this evaluation. It's our responsibility to work with our volunteers for the well-being of our dogs and cats. Information is not forthcoming, so I do not know what transpired with the firings. I am left to believe the volunteers had concerns regarding the treatment or lack of treatment with the dogs, and their concerns were not properly addressed. For such a mass firing to occur, best practice could not have been implemented and followed. As a constituent, I'm asking the commissioners to please ensure best practice protocol is being implemented and followed at our shelters and that the volunteers be reinstated. 
please seriously discuss the need for an outside objective entity to reevaluate our shelter and please approve the funding for this evaluation. Please to hold staff accountable for the negative impact the firings have had on our dogs and will have on our dogs in the future. I truly appreciate your time and consideration considering this or concerning this situation. Thank you. I, I have uh, copies of the statement I just read. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. First and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes. Steve Reinhart, Manatee County. Uh, as you may or may not know, I'm the chairman of the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee, and uh, we'd like this board to uh, look at uh, making a policy change for the proceeds of uh, any and all future uh, land surplus land sales go for the benefit of uh, affordable housing. You know, as you know, uh, a lot of your annual sources for affordable housing are depleted uh, fairly quickly, and we see this as, a, as an easy opportunity um, to fund additional affordable housing. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you, and thank you for your service. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Yes, ma'am. Margarita Fazioli, I've been resident of Manatee County for 32 years. This is my home. Um, I came here because I am concerned that the uh, firing of the volunteers um, has affected uh, many, many people. First of all, the staff. I have met many of the staff, and honestly, I have not seen a single staff member walk around lazy. Uh, I get there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they are moving. So as far as the kennel workers, they are doing their part. That's what I see. I get there at 8 o'clock in the morning. But with the uh, firing of the volunteers that are usually the afternoon walkers, I believe it affects the morale of the workers there, and you lose good workers. Um, I, have, I feel that you lose the uh, volunteers who really want to help because they don't want to be involved in something like that. They, we just want to walk dogs. But walking dogs and being concerned over what happens when you leave is important. So um, I've read a couple of places that it's not under your jurisdiction to change what has happened, but um, as, rep as, as, as a representative of the people that are sitting here, I urge you, please intervene, do what you can, and get these good people back to walking. The people that are left are hurting. The staff are demoralized because they feel that they are, and by staff I mean the, the, the kennel workers who open the doors, who feed, who walk, but it also affects the dogs. So um, please intervene and help uh, the, pe the staff, the volunteers, and the dogs of Manatee County. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? First and last name, County of Residence. For the record, Glenn Giblina. I agree with the folks that just spoke here. How do you replace a couple hundred hours a week of free labor, dedicated uh, uh, volunteers? It's unbelievable it even got to this point. So I hope you do the right thing. A couple of heads should roll, and these people should be reinstated. <clears throat> Steve Reinhardt, Affordable Housing Board. As you know, I'm on the board as well. We never knew that surplus property funds did not go into an affordable housing fund. That's, that's unconscionable. If you've got surplus property, it says in the statutes that you should be using those funds for affordable housing. So I would hope that you would take that under consideration. Let's talk about public comment. What's the problem with having call in public comment? <clears throat> it, wasn't that, <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago our community supported our newly elected candidates, did sign waving, knocking on doors, thousands of phone calls. We did. Why can you not give us the sa same respect for calling in? Funny, when we had over 100 people waiting to call in on the DeSoto Speedway, bam, let's not do public call-in anymore because COVID's over. What kind of excuse is that? I think, really, you didn't want to hang around to 10 or 11 o'clock at night and take those 100 calls from concerned citizens. Uh, so very disappointed. The part, the part that bothers me most, 
So many of us can't get down here. When you are campaigning, you want us to give the word out to the public about your attributes. We don't get the same consideration. Call in public comment should be a choice that we should have. It's unbelievable that, that you allow, uh, just like that overnight, no more public comment. What bothers me the most, not one of you said, you know what, let's take a second look at public comment. Maybe, maybe we should bring it back. It only takes four votes to change it. Four newly elected officials that we campaigned for want us to wave saying, make phone calls, and we don't get the same respect. So, redress of grievances, and that's what I'm doing. I have a right to request government for redress of grievance. This can be a form of petitioning, and I am doing that <coughs> today, <coughs> right now. You need to bring public comment back. What's the big deal? You got a 30 minute time limit. I'll give you a prime example. Workshop yesterday, right? You had one. Guy sat here all day, and at three minutes, oh two, three minutes he says, I got a lot to say. Sorry, you're done. Guy waited all day. You could have gave him the, the, the courtesy of a minute or two. You have a 30 minute limit, and then we go back at the end of the line. You should bring public comment back. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward for public comment at this time? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Please say your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning. Linda Patty, Manatee County resident. I'm one of the 11 volunteers also terminated at the Manatee County Animal Welfare in an email from Jody Frisk. No reason was given, although in our volunteer handbook, it is stated there should be a meeting with supervisory staff to discuss possible dismissal, except for severe misbehavior, which none of us have, cre uh, have done. All of us are at a loss for why we were dismissed. I have volunteered for five or six years, walking dogs, helping socialize and train them, in the yards, cleaned yards and kennels, done laundry, and so on. When the pandemic rules forbid me to walk dogs, I took some out for days, day trips. It's very rewarding to me to do this. When I first started volunteering, I was floored by the dedication of the volunteers. Many of those dismissed are the ones spending a huge amount of their spare time both with the dogs and writing up attractive articles for online posts to facilitate the dog adoptions. They, pro they provide free labor which benefits this county. Their loss at the shelter has severely impacted the well-being of the dogs as others have mentioned and the staff as they struggle to exercise and socialize the dogs every day. I did not wish to get involved in the politics of this situation. I just wanted to enjoy walking with the dogs. However, I am speaking now to ask you, the commissioners, to press for our reinstatement and to investigate how this could have occurred. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to address the board at this time? Okay, seeing no one, we'll close public comment. We have one commissioner on the board to comment. It's Commissioner Cruz, sir. Yeah, a couple of things here. We touched on a few things, so I'll, I'll go in somewhat reverse order. One, Collins, I, I've made the motion twice to bring back Collins. Uh, we have discussed it. We discussed it at length at one point. We started talking about li time limits and restrictions. Commissioner Boward made a motion once. It has been discussed. We just don't have four votes for it. So, uh, and I'm, I'm sick of making motions that don't get seconds. So... At this point, someone else will have to make that motion. But we have made it. It has been discussed. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't have a, a problem with what you're asking for. Uh, as, as for surplus land, uh, I agree. I, I, I sit on that Affordable Housing Advisory Board. Uh, we've discussed this a couple of times there. That's why Steve, uh, who's the chair, wrote the letter uh, to everybody to request it. The, the standard Informal practice is, yeah, surplus land in Manatee County goes towards affordable housing, but it's not a uh, written in the rules requirement. Um, you know, it, the way I read Florida statute, 
is surplus land that's currently off the tax rolls owned by the taxpayers is supposed to go towards affordable housing. I can give it to someone to build affordable housing. I can sell it to someone to do affordable housing, or I can sell it to a for-profit to do something other than affordable housing. But the proceeds from that sale, in my opinion, should go towards affordable housing. We need a housing trust fund. This is a great opportunity to seed that and be able to do other great things with it. Uh, without using your general funds and tax dollars. That's how I read the Florida statute. Other people, because they've, you know, they're, they're attorneys or whatever, they, they find loopholes and say the word reasonable there or will consider there. Look, I read it like surplus land is your land. Your land should be used towards affordable housing. Uh, and, and a sale of it for a for-profit eliminates the argument that, because we always make, we, we have to first say, does, is this deemed usable for affordable housing? And it's very easy. Nah, it's not. It's not near trans. It's not, and, and it justifies us pulling it off the rolls as affordable housing eligible. And then we sell it to, to someone to, to build a restaurant. And then we pocket the money and go build a pickleball court. But if, if the money was going to go towards affordable housing anyway, then maybe we deem more property eligible for affordable housing because we can't skirt the, the situation. And honestly, most of the land I'd rather sell to a for-profit because we'll make more money off of it and we'll get more dollars in a trust fund and we can actually do more affordable housing with the dollars than we probably can with the land. So I'd like to see us put something more forcefully in our policies that require us to use affordable housing because honestly, the way I read the Florida statute, that's what we're supposed to do regardless of who wants to spin it around and, and argue that's not the case. Uh, so I, I agree with Steve. I've, I've been involved in those conversations. I'm glad that the, the board has stepped up to make that formal request. Uh, finally, relative to the volunteers, I've spent the second half of my recess uh, dealing, <laughs> focusing on this. I think I've spoken to most either in person or on the phone or via email, most of those volunteers. I've spoken with every level of our county government associated with this um, many times. I, I, I'm with everyone. I, I don't know why we give away free labor, <laughs> honestly. I mean, you know, we talk about public-private partnerships. We talk about smaller government. Here's people saying, I'm going to come for free, that they're clearly dedicated people. They, they, they may be a small fraction of the, the volunteers, but they're a large fraction of the time that the volunteers spend. Uh, they, they spend disproportionate amount of time. I, I We don't control this. I've said this to all of you. We have no say by Florida statute in Paid employees, unpaid employees, volunteer employees, we do not have any say in this whatsoever. Um, you know, I, 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 I wish there would have been a, a better explanation for, for why uh, it, it was done. I, I hear you. I, you know, I, I'd love for to find a way of getting you all back in some capacity with our animal welfare, whether it's at Bishop, it's at Palmetto, it's sitting at home working on something on social. You're, you're all dedicated people. I, I, I've heard both sides of the story, and because I've heard two sides of Two conflicting stories. I can't say which one's true or not. And again, I don't, I don't control it. But I, I, I hear you. I feel for you. I thank you for all the time you have spent in animal welfare. Hopefully, there's some scenario where you can get back involved in animal welfare. But uh, the, the extent I can do for, for all of you is a be a sounding board for you, and b you know say hey, you know as, as a single member of a board that doesn't fully control it. Uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to hope that. That the staff that does have a say in it can can work something out for for everyone's best benefit and and equally if not more importantly for the dog's benefit so thank you thank you sir okay we're going to move on to consent is there anyone um who's here would like to open up public comment on consent agenda any public comment for today's consent agenda minus item number 21 mr Gibellina, first and last name county of residence you have three minutes to address the board on items on consent please state your item minus item 21 Glenn Giblina, for the record, three minutes per consent item. So my first one would be <clears throat> number 58, which is the termination of South Florida Board of Trustees. I've been, in, I've, I've, I've been involved with this since the day you, you, you proffered that agreement. University of South Florida has not stepped up to the plate. They have slow walked that agreement, and enough is enough. Terminate it, get it back, get a professional dormitory builder, and build, the stu build student housing. You know, we got 30, 40,000 students in Manatee County. We got a couple hundred dorm rooms, right? There is a great need for it. This is a perfect opportunity to put that nine acres in a trust fund. 
and then lease it out to professional dormitory developers that would develop that and manage it. And you guys always own the property like you have. So I think, I think you know, University of South Florida with the board, oh, we got to do this, we got to do that, and we don't like these terms. You're giving them nine free acres. What do you mean you don't like the terms? I don't, I don't, I don't get that at all. So, so shame on them for not moving forward. Here's a great opportunity to do something with that land. Strongly suggest student housing. You know, my daughter's in fourth year college. I brought a pre-played dormitory plan. Well, guess what? Today, that plan doesn't cover half of the $900 a month rent. So we have to find other sources, even with a prepaid. So that has not kept up with the rent increases at a college level at, at, at well. So all these, all these kids here that are in our county, they're thrown in the open market. They're trying to hold a job, they're trying to pay rent and go to school. It's a tough grind. And with rent's going up, it's even tougher. So please, I would suggest that you do that. Uh, that's my three minutes on that, and I want to move on to item number 83, since that was moved to consent agenda. If you can restart my time, I would appreciate it. No, you get three minutes on consent, sir. No, it's three minutes per item on consent. Mr. Attorney, how do we do that? I apologize. Three minutes per item. Maximum, Maximum of ten. Okay. Yes. So... <clears throat> And I've been following this item, the 920 project, from day one. What an ill-conceived sale that was. Here's the problem. You sold the building for $100,000. You said, well, do something affordable for seven years. Who does that? If you're going to go into affordable housing, do it in a professional manner where it should be a lure for 25 or 50 years, like other professional workforce housing developers. You didn't do that. So that was a huge mistake that you didn't do that. And not only that, you sold it to them for 100000 and the time on the seven years started from the time he bought it. Not the CO, like everybody else does. Let's burn up that few years and burn down that seven years, and by the way, we're going to come back for a gap financing. He didn't need the money. He got all sorts of services and, and concessions from, from the county. That project was going to move forward with or without that gap financing. So that was a waste of taxpayers' money, and I guarantee you, in seven years, he's going to, he's going to convert it to condos, and th those people at the 120 AMI, They'll be out anyways. That's not workforce housing. That doesn't help anybody. Short term, maybe, sure, but, but not, not long term. And then you would think that when it got to the city of Bradenton, they would have said, oh, listen, we, our, all our workforce developers do 25-year laws, and they do it from 30 to 120 AMI. But that didn't happen. The city failed just as bad as the county did on this deal. There's nothing we can do about it now. It's set in stone. But I, will, I would urge this board to think more carefully in the future when you sell surplus property earmarked for affordable that you do the spectrum of the 30 to the 120 AMI and you do it for a minimum of 25 years. Or better yet, start that land trust and never give up the property. You got developers that would be happy to go into a 99 year lease and take the land cost out of it to keep this cost down on affordable housing. So that's my spin on that. I got a few other things I want to say, but that's it. One thing I did, I, I, I do want to mention this on the, on the candidates, the 58 candidates, I read, all, I read most of their resumes. I don't know what everyone's so upset about, but the public should know. Uh, but I will tell you this out of the 58, there's one name I didn't see, and that was John Mask. I mean, if he was going to step up to the plate, he should have at least had a resume in her. Thank you. For the record. For the, for the. Okay, anybody else would like to come forward for public comment on consent? Anybody else for public comment on consent? Okay. Seeing no one. 
get myself back where I was in my agenda. Mr. Um, Chairman. Oh, I have. May I ask a question? Yes, I have Commissioner Cruz on the board ahead of you. Go ahead. I was well, going to tell Glenn real quick. Look, that that was sold before. Definitely. This entire board was on that board. What, what's done is done. And one, 100,000, I get what you're saying, but th there was a lot of work to be, that had to be entirely demolished. There was uh, environmental issues with it. They, they spent real money on that above and beyond that. The cost. Commissioner Cruz, so, I'm going to stop you for a second. Sir, this is your last warning. The next disruption, I'll have you removed by a deputy. Like, Commissioner Cruz, go ahead. You're talking to me? Man. <laughs> you gavels, thought you were special. Gavel's going to your head. <laughs> No, it, it, it was done before us, and we've had this conversation. This, this is kind of the, the final end of it, and so I know you know it. They already have senior financing. We can't modify the terms of what was done by a previous board because they have the financing associated with it. We, we, I, I do believe we've taken some beneficial concessions on this in terms of what they or they've given beneficial concessions. <laughs> It has to stay affordable as long as this loan's outstanding. So you're you're saying it's seven years from the time they put a shovel in the ground. This loan's seven years. We made it a requirement. That was a modification to their original request that it has to stay affordable for the entire term of this loan, however long it takes them to repay this loan. So that, that's going to extend the affordability period beyond what the original contemplation was. This is getting us something. But we can't modify the existing law and terms because it was used to get financing that's already in place. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Ball. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, item number 83, I don't see where that was moved to consent. Help me. It was read into the record this morning yeah. that way. Do you want to pull that item, ma'am? Pull it. Okay. I hate to do it, but. That's all right. We'll pull 83. 83. All right, so then the motion to approve consent will need to be consent minus item, items 21 and item 83. Commissioner Ron, you made a motion to approve consent. Do you amend it to exclude items 21 and 83? Okay, and I've seconded the motion. and I agree to that change as well. All right. Catherine Walter, I didn't actually close public comment, and there's Catherine Walter has signed up to speak. Okay, thank you. I just didn't want to skip over you because you'd signed up for consent. All right, we'll close public comment for consent then. And again, we have a motion to approve by Ron, seconded by Van Austinbridge. We've held public comment. There are no other commissioners on the board to speak at this time, so we can cast our votes. <laughs> Madam Clerk, consent passes unanimously by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, we'll go to item number 21, which was pulled by Commissioner Ballard. Ma'am? So I actually pulled this item because there are two projects that I have been uh, working on, and I, I, I might have a couple of people from the public watching with bated breath to see if their items went through today, and I just wanted to highlight that those items are uh, being funded. So we have our first community garden, which will be in uh, Elwood Park. The funding for that is is moving forward, as well as funding for um, design of a community center in Washington Park. So it just because it was on consent, I just wanted to highlight that those items are there. It's kind of hidden away and not not easy to find on the agenda. Is that Commissioner Mel? That's you good, it. You good with that? Yep. All right. Um, move to approve item 21 on consent. I'm trying to get it. Mr. Vice Chairman. Yes. So we'll need somebody other than the person holding the gavel to make that motion. Okay. And we also need to take public well, comment on it. Amanda made the motion. <coughs> she did. Okay. It's hard to tell asking, from. I was asking for the motion. Comment. Okay. All right. Come on. All right, and then we do need to take public comment. And then um, is there any public comment regarding um, item 21 on consent? Garden. The garden. Seeing none, um, all those, uh, go ahead. We, the motion's been up. It's been approved by Ballard, seconded by Cruz. All those in favor, go ahead and cast your votes now. Madam Clerk, the motion passes seven to none. Commissioner Ball, item 83. 
Yes, I, I'm sorry that I, I had to pull that. I wanted to vote for the consent because there were so many items on it. But the gap funding, uh, you, you guys know I'm not going to vote for gap funding. So um, I know it will move forward, but I just can't vote for it myself. And you all knew that. So that's all I had to say on that item. Okay. Um, item number 83 will entertain motions at this time. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cruz, seconded by Commissioner Van Austinbridge. We'll open item num number 83 up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on item number 83 at this time? Okay, seeing no one. I'm put myself on the And I'm going to put myself on the board as well. Um, seeing no one, we'll close public comment. Commissioner Cruz, you're up first, sir. Yeah, I just want to point out that this is kind of the, the, the administrative last step in a process. Uh, we've already discussed this. We've already approved providing gap financing for this project. All the steps are done. This is literally just administratively approving the agreement in place that we all agreed to agree to once we voted previously. So it, it, voting, even voting no on this does not eliminate the gap financing or the financing we've already voted to provide them. All it does is send the attorneys back to renegotiate, even though this is the exact agreement we asked for. Mr. Chairman, may I dialogue, please? Oh, please. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Commissioner Cruz. This was voted on before. Um, I have always been a no vote on gap funding. I think I might have voted one time for it. I've been consistent, uh, and I have my reasons, as you all know. We've discussed this thoroughly. So uh, I just didn't want it to be my last meeting and then vote for something that I didn't agree with. It has nothing to do with what this board uh, can do in the future or what it's doing today, but I myself, I don't want to be involved in it. That was it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And I was going to, next on the board, I was... Uh, going to say most of what Commissioner Cruz said, actually. Um, we already went, we, we decided there were two final uh, gap funding items that we were going to go ahead and approve and do. Um, this one has already been voted on, I think, twice. We're just down to, you know, there was some issue, I don't remember what it was, but there was, it was a minor sort of paper, you know, cleanup issue, if you will, on this. And that's why it came back to the board. Um, so I don't see why it would be a, con you know, no controversial thing. <laughs> I don't know why it would be controversial. Commissioner Satcher, you're next, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. These have always, for me, um, been a little bit of a, of a tough issue because I, there's some just behind-the-scenes basic things as far as do we want to be. Uh, you know, bottom line, I think on the one hand, we all agree that the Manatee County government shouldn't be out there building houses, and, then, and we're not in this case, right? And, uh, and then on the other hand, we all agree and we have constituents come up to us time after time saying, you know, my uh, aunt needs a place to stay and can't find an affordable place to stay. And so the affordable housing is a real issue. And so somewhere in between, we have to find the, the right spot. Um, and when this came up the first time, because um, I've voted for some and against some, and um, I believe if we go back to my record on it, but I do remember, I recall that when this came up, I said, we need some type of, uh, you know, protocol that we can stick to and point to in the future. And I think the, the board kind of, we really moved forward on that. Um, but this is one, and I will say, it does seem a little disingenuous to stand here and say, you gave this, you sold this, you did this, you the other, when the speaker knows good and well that happened before uh, we were even on this board. So at that point, um, you know, Manatee County government with a different commission um, had sold that piece of property. And at some point you have to say we're pot committed. If we disagree or not, uh, don't love a decision from a previous board, are we going to hurt the people, uh, make the people of Manatee County pay for it? Um, I don't think that's the right decision. I think the thing in this case is to move forward um, and then to be more strict as we look at other projects in the future. That's what uh, I personally am planning on doing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well said, sir. Commissioner Bearden and then Commissioner Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I, I was the one that brought the motion to stop gap funding in the future. Um, however, regarding this particular one, which was a loan, I was only, you know, uh, you know I decided, okay, this is the, this is the only one. That, that, that I'm gonna that I'm gonna go for and so I, I had actually voted for it last time and I'm gonna vote for it today but moving forward I'm not going to be in favor of any type of gap funding and uh, 
you know, it's that's just that's just where I'm at with it. But you guys know how I feel about um, gap funding in general. So, yes, sir, Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, it's not worth it. Okay, thank you, sir. Held public comment. We have a motion to approve the item by Commissioner Cruz, a second by Commissioner Van Austinbridge. We can cast our votes now. There's no one on the board to speak. And it passes by a vote of six to one with Commissioner Baugh in opposition. All right. That concludes consent. It's 1030. So let's take our normal hour and a half <laughs> break that we take an hour and a half into our meeting. Um, well, we already took a break, didn't we? Yeah. Should we keep going? Let's keep going. This is so much. This is too much fun. Um, we're going to get into advertised public hearings presentations upon request. First one is item number 73, approval of the Children's Services Advisory Board's fiscal year 23-24 investment recommendations. Who is here? Well, first of all, would anyone like a presentation? Commissioner Ballard. I'd like to discuss. I don't necessarily need a presentation. Floor is yours, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clegg, Tracy Adams, Deputy Director, Community and Veterans Services. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you mean for her to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, but you're, I, we just love you so much, I want to interrupt you. Um, <laughs> did you have any like specifics you wanted to ask of her? Or, or, I'm going to let Commissioner Ballard sort of run this. Sure. Uh, so I, uh, I attended, <coughs> I'd, I'd say, the great majority of the uh, Children's Services Advisory Board meetings. Uh, and I, I think that most of the funding that has been recommended um, I, I agree with, but there is there is one specific recommendation for funding um, that I don't believe is an appropriate use of taxpayer funds, um, and so I I don't want to see it approved, um, which is uh, line 48, which is the mental health counseling program uh, for also youth. Um, this is a, an LGBTQ charity. Um, in speaking with them, I was not convinced that the counseling that they are going to provide will not be focused on helping or encouraging children into a, a gender transition or making them more uncomfortable with, um, with, their, with their gender situation. I, I just don't believe that it's an appropriate use of taxpayer payer funds. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, I will echo that uh, statement by uh, Commissioner Ballard. Um, and then I think this might be just a, a more in general policy um, for us moving forward. You know, the federal government has the Hyde Amendment um, that basically says that taxpayer funding is never going to go and should not go to uh, any services or any organizations that are uh, predominantly funded as abortion organization or abortion providing organizations. And um, and so if we want to stay on a general uh level, then I think that we, I will move to make an amendment uh, that that is part of any approvals uh, that go through with this, that none of that money goes to any type of Planned Parenthood organization or anything along those lines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Um, no one else is on the board for comment. Let's open this up to the public. Who from the public would like to come forward? No one signed up. So who from the public would like to come forward to speak on item number 73 on today's agenda? Yes, ma'am. So please state your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to address the board on item number 73. Good morning. With protocol having been established, my name is Drina Green, and I am a 52-year resident of Manatee County. As the program administrator for Manatee County Girls Club, doing business as just for girls, I am in favor of the regular agenda item for your approval of the CSAB investment recommendations for fiscal year 23-24 for the voter approved children's dedicated millage. The funding recommendation process this year was extensive, thorough, and fair, and it focused on results first. 
the board that has been appointed by you and under the leadership of Chairperson Connie Shingledecker is a dedicated, knowledgeable, and strong board. Thank you, Board of County Commissioners, the County Administration, Children's Services Advisory Board members, and the Community Services Department leadership and staff for all that you are doing to improve the quality of life for Manatee County's children and their families. I will provide the clerk with our annual report with the results achieved this past year through our successful public-private partnership with Manatee County, through our one mission, our two alternative education programs, JFG Elementary and JFG Middle, and three leadership and learning centers in East, West, and North Manatee County, we are providing academic enrichment and support, behavior intervention, and character development. Children are our greatest resource. Research proves that breaking the gener generational cycles of poverty improves the local economy more than any other investment, especially among girls and women who often become the working single parent head of household. Prevention, intervention, and education are more effective and less expensive than failure or welfare, treatment or hospitalization, school dropout, or even incarceration. For every dollar invested in research-based children's services, a savings of $7 to $10 is realized and reduced costs for these things. In closing, we recognize that potential is universal, but opportunities are not. Here in Manatee <coughs> County, opportunities are greater because of the Children's Services Dedicated Millage Fund created to improve the quality of life for all residents here in Manatee County. Thank you for helping create a brighter future for local girls. Thank you for helping girls find safety, survival, and success. But most of all, thank you for helping local girls achieve their full potential. Thank you. Thank you, and really thank you for everything that Just for Girls does for this county. Absolutely. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to address the board on this item? Okay, seeing no one, we'll close public comment, and Commissioner Bearden is on the board. Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to know a little bit more in regards to what Commissioner Satcher was, um, had stated in regards to this Planned Parenthood issue. Um, is this something that we're looking at, obviously, is, is, is there a specific amount of monies that's going to fund Planned Parenthood through this specific organization? No, there's no Planned there's no Parenthood here. No. There's none? No. And how do I make sure that that happens? Because based on, huh? No, 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 not just read, but I, I want to make sure that if I'm supporting an organization, that this organization is not going to be, that's, it, this, this means a lot to me, because this is principle. Right. And this is Christian principle to me. So it means a lot to me to make sure that if I'm going to be approving something, that monies don't get allocated to organizations that sell babies' bodies parts on the open market. Yeah. Yes, sir. So let me help you achieve that's, that. That's, that's, that's what I, I want to make sure that what we're doing here, that because that, I, I would be convicted yeah. big time. So, and every one of us that are Christians up here should be convicted as well yeah. Okay, so that's in regards not, to that. So just to be clear, that's not in item number 73, but to well, avoid it and to achieve what you want to achieve, yeah. you would get with the county attorney's office and draw up an ordinance that prohibits this board from doing exactly, you know, contributing monies, going to organizations, How do we do that? fitting How do we your make description. Oh. Mr. County Attorney, can you help with this? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, and I was kind of waiting for the discussion to come over here. I figured it would at some point. So we're talking about the exercise of the board's fiscal discretion and how the board spends taxpayers' money. And there is a lot of discretion there, and the board does set policy in terms of what you're willing to fund and what you're not willing to fund. So, for example, what's presented to you today, if there's any line item here that's recommended by the Children's Services Advisory Board, you could make a motion to approve this absent or that particular line item. That is well settled within the fiscal discretion of the board. Going the next step, if you want to create a fiscal policy that basically says regardless of whom you approve, none of the money is going to be used for a particular purpose that the board finds objectionable. You should set that by written policy. Uh, I'm not sure you need to do it by ordinance, to be honest with you, because every one of these typically has to come in for a separate agreement with the county, and staff could simply write into that agreement, no funds will be used for that purpose. And then if they seek to be reimbursed for it, they will not be reimbursed. These are typically funded on a reimbursement basis. They go out 
they pay for the services and they come into the county with an invoice and ask to be reimbursed. So I think the board could do that by separate motion and then we might want to formalize it by resolution at some point. We could bring it back by resolution and do that. But it's certainly within your discretion and authority. So today, if you wanted to make, make a separate motion on that to direct staff to prepare a resolution that prohibits the use of county funds for that purpose and bring it back to the board. And we'll certainly help them. Let's let's do item 73. When we're done, I'll go back to yeah, Commissioner Bearden. And, and you guys can time. iron out your motion, and we'll go from there. So, all right. So the exciting topic, item number 73, uh, Commissioners Ron, Satcher, and Ballard are all on the board. Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with the funds that were regard to Commissioner Ballard's comments, can we as the board reallocate those funds to somewhere else within, can we say, if, we, if there's 27,000 sitting there, can we say now we want it to go to Easter Seals? Or is that within our discretion or is that with, within, a, within their discretion as so, that board? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Ron, you can, but there's some language in the Children's Services Advisory Board ordinance or the children's millage ordinance that says you have to come back and do that in a separate public hearing. Okay. Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, without, uh, so I am trying to not bring up the specifics of why I brought up this issue deliberately. It's deliberate um, and there's, I'm just going to ask for a little bit of trust, you know, from the board, but I'll just say that uh, I didn't bring that up for, for no good reason just because I want to talk about something that serious while we're trying to approve something for children. And I don't appreciate, you know, some of the circumstances that got me in this, in this discussion today, um, not from any of y'all, uh, but from others that I said, can we please change this? This needs to change. And, um, and I got pushback and more pushback. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting calls the day before, oh, we're, we've made a change. And it's a little bit late. They probably deserve to be embarrassed. But at this point, I'm not calling names. Um, and I do have a question for the attorney. Um, if we were to approve something now and then do a separate motion um, that takes care of what Commissioner uh, Bearden brought up, would, would it be retroactive? I mean, as far as not, not previous years or money already spent, but I'm saying on this list here, or do I need to pull everything that... You do not. I think it would apply going forward, including everything that's in front of you today, because we're talking about the next fiscal year, correct? Correct, right. that will begin October 1st. Fiscal year, so you could make that decision today or at a future meeting before the next fiscal year kicks in, and the, that clause could be placed in the agreements for the next fiscal year. So you're not being forced to vote on something today that you could that would fund things that you find objectionable. You're not giving up your policy making authority by approving this today to place that restriction on the agreements that are authorized by this item. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Sanchez? I believe so. All right, thank you. Thank thank you, sir. Ballard and Bearden, Commissioner Ballard. So I I was ready to make my motion, but if if Commissioner Oops. Bearden has something Self to say back on the board then. Commissioner Bearden. No, I I want to know that are any funds for the organization, will any funds that they get, whether it's from Manatee County government or a different organization, will any funds be allocated to Planned Parenthood? None of this, but some of this could free up other funds within the organization to fund Planned Parenthood, which that's what I want to know. Do any funds get funded through the organization to Planned Parenthood? Because we don't even have a Planned Parenthood in Manatee County. We have other pregnancy centers that, you know, I would be in favor of organizations funding that. But if, if my convictions yeah. would, would keep me from saying, okay, are any funds going to be funded to Planned Parenthood at all through the organization? Right. M Mr. Sure. Sure. Because, because let's just say I give them X I'll, amount of dollars, well, then that might open up other funds to, to fund Planned Parenthood that may not come directly from us. To whom are you directing your questions, sir? Uh, I don't know. Can somebody come up and somebody from PACE uh, that's up here, can, can you guys come up and answer that question for me, please? Okay. So before, before anyone from the public comes up, um, 
know. Mr. I don't Chair. I know that question. Could we, could we, could I make a motion to table this until after lunch and then we address the issues during lunch? Would that be appropriate? You can make any motion you like, sir. We don't have a motion on the floor. I can tell you that. I have Ballard, Satcher, and Ball on the board to speak. Um, why don't we continue discussion? You got a motion on the floor. Now there's a motion on the floor. Why don't, why don't we continue discussion and sort of circle back to this? Because I'm sure this motion is going to get amended. And we'll be testing out my chairman's skills on the first day back. All right. Commissioner Ballard, do you want me to skip and go to Commissioner Satcher for now? You were waiting yes, for the motion? Yes, because I'm literally just right. trying to okay. make my motion. Commissioner Satcher, I'm going to go to you, sir. You're going to me? Yes, sir. Um, I would like to amend the motion on the floor um, to approve the recommended funding minus number eight and minus number, where's also um, 48. Just, so I, I guess in theory I'm on the board because he's asking me to amend my motion. I just want to clarify. You want me to amend my motion because of Planned Parenthood to take funding away from pregnancy prevention projects. Like this this is where we're going with this? Like Commissioner, um, where we're going, this is this is ridiculous. I'm not gonna play around anymore. I agree. We finally agree on something. Yes. Uh, so well, you know, you're not you're not putting me on, on, you know, any type of a tough situation. It's other organizations um, that you're putting up front and center right now by making a bad decision, by pushing an issue that I asked you not to push. Uh, the fact of the matter is I toured Pace, wonderful place. I'm excited about what they're doing for their children, uh, for the, the girls that go there, the learning and the education. Just absolutely great and enjoyed my time. And then as you go, here's a big display that's talking about different services they have. And bottom line is they're bringing in Planned Parenthood um, to teach pregnancy prevention to the youth. And um, it's similar to having the fox guard the hen house. You've got an organization that only makes money. Um, no significant portion of their uh, budget is covered by anything other than abortion services or liberal politicians writing them checks um, from, the, from government, from taxpayer money. Those are the two things that they're, fu they're primarily funded by. Um, I was not speaking with the CEO at that time. I didn't think it was appropriate to put that employee in any type of a situation. And that employee didn't call attention to that on purpose. It just came up, and I wasn't expecting it. I talked to the CEO and said, uh, and brought up the fact that I didn't think that was appropriate um, to have an organization who only makes money off of uh, aborting babies to be the one talking to girls about that. And so that's what I asked, um, and I was told that I was naive and wrong um, in more words than that, I'm sure, um, but that, no, uh, I didn't understand the lay of the land. And uh, so I was put off, and I said, well, everyone can do and make the decisions they want to make. I can't tell you what you can do with your organization. And I said, but, um, you know, for me, representing my constituents, my taxpayers, and having my conscience, um, you know, I won't ever be able to vote for any money to go to any type of services along those lines. Um, and then shortly after that, uh, you know, a commissioner brought up a big support. I just want to make it clear how much I've tried to avoid this situation. A commissioner brought up uh, a largeable, don large, largeable, a large sizable donation to PACE and it was for their overall organization, and so I still did not bring up the issue. And of course, by sunshine, I can't call everyone and tell them the issue. Um, and I had once again spoken with the CEO and was told uh, to pound sand, is what I was told. Um, and so, but I still didn't make it an issue. And then here we are looking at the children's, you know, uh, advisory board, which, um, you know, their, their recommendations, and right there next to 
uh, number 48, is not just to fund the program at PACE, but to fund their pregnancy prevention, which I know good and well um, has a unique way of preventing a pregnancy um, and is partnering with an organization that doesn't prevent pregnancy, um, but ends pregnancies. And there's no way to do that that doesn't end up with the life, uh, the, the loss and ending of a life. Um, and so, you know, I won't vote for that. And then the sad thing is, all of a sudden, I'm getting phone calls this morning that we're never going to partner with them again, and et cetera. And uh, so I was trying to change the overall policy. I still think we should in the future, because there may be something on this long list of another, you know, someone could change the name of some organization and still try to slip something by this board. Um, so I think we should change the overall policy. And I won't apologize that we should not be, as government, um, you know, making votes that could end up in ending someone's life. So um, that's the full situation that I have tried to avoid saying in public. Um, but there it is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, sir. So I had a member of PACE reach out to me a couple months ago, told me that a commissioner had come and toured PACE and that a discussion was had regarding the display. Apparently that was you. So they asked me, um, they said, well, one, you know, we don't encourage girls to get abortions, but we do have this display here and they do come in and help with pregnancy prevention, not termination. But, and she said, do you think we should just cut all ties with them, with Planned Parenthood? And I said, hell yes. Okay, back they went. And I, I did not follow up or have any further discussions with them on it. Um, I don't run that organization. It is what it is. They are here. So I'm going to invite Pace to come up to the podium. Your name has been mentioned about 10 times. I feel like you, have a, you should be afforded the opportunity to speak. So please state your first and last name in your county of residence. Good morning. I am Amy Wick Mavis, and I'm the executive director for Pace Center for Girls, and I've been a Manatee County resident for the past 28 years. Yes, uh, Commissioner Slatcher, you did reach out to me and explain your concerns, for which I thanked you for that. Never once did I tell you to pound sand. Never once did I tell you that I wasn't going to take that into consideration. In fact, due to the changes and the recent changes in the legislature, this is something that Pace Center for Girls has been struggling with, looking at how we can stay within line with what this statue is and what the new legislation has. I, you have been on a six-week recess, and so I have been trying to reach out to let you know that Pace Inc. has made the decision that we will not be partnering with Planned Parenthood going forward because of the changes that were made in the legislature. Uh, we take uh, your concerns very seriously. Never once has a dollar from the Pace Center for Girls budget been given to Planned Parenthood. That has never been the case. Our job is pregnancy prevention. We believe that for every year we keep a girl from becoming a teen mother, it's another year towards self-sufficiency. And one of the great things about Manatee County is we know that Pace girls stay in our community. They work in our community. They serve you all. They are working for uh, at Galvano's office right now. This is what our girls do today. And this is we appreciate you making the accommodation for us to talk now. We're leaving here to go to graduation. We're Ten of our PACE girls who never thought they were going to have the opportunity to graduate high school will be doing just that. So I do appreciate your concerns. I heard you, Commissioner Slatcher. I am uh, um, upset that you would choose to say pound sand and make those con uh, conditions when I felt I listened to you very deeply and concernedly and never once argued your point. I appreciated your feedback, and I did try to reach out to you on many occasions to give you the feedback that you had asked for. You had said you were one vote and only one vote, and I appreciated that, but I wanted you to know what PACE has done to address that issue. So I hope that is all of your questions and everything that's been laid to rest so that you know and we can continue to do the good work in Manatee County where we're changing girls' lives who are going to stay here and become women and mothers in our community. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you coming up on the spot. Commissioner Ball. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, this, this whole thing, I mean, I totally agree with what Commissioner Satcher and 
you know, has said. I mean, we the, the board needs to make a decision on what we are willing to spend taxpayer dollars on. I mean, that's what it boils down to. So I'm glad, Mr. Chair, and if I understand you correctly, after we vote on this, uh, which Commissioner Ballard will make a motion on, minus number 48, we're going to also look at doing a resolution or something to that effect, Commissioner, I mean, um, Mr. Clegg, uh, so that we know where the monies are being spent. I would stress to this board that I realize it's, it's tough and it gets hot and we get hot under the collar, but the one thing I want to, st to stress to this board going forward is that we remember that we're all equals up here. We all have a say. We're all entitled to our opinions, and we need to be respectful in how we speak to one another up here on the dais. I think the public expects that. They want that. And I think that that's the professional way to do it. And if you watch, you know, you talk about Florida, our legislature, if you look at them, you don't generally see them screaming and yelling at each other. I mean, once in a while you might, but it's rare. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I just want to make sure I did understand you correctly and what we were going to be doing. Yes, ma'am. So, I'll take these one at a time here. Um, Commissioner Satcher, you're next on the board, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a thought for the board. I would, if the motioner and seconder would be willing, um, could we have the vote on policy as far as where this money could be spent? Could we have that first so that it's, there's no question about it. It's settled before we have to cast the vote on the actual uh, I trust projects. the county attorney. County attorney says it doesn't really matter, but you would need the, the motioner. The motioner to rescind his motion to be able to put yours in front of it because there's already a motion on the floor. Commissioner Cruz, what do you want to do? You're the motioner. I'm doing my motion. He's staying with his motion, sir. The motion on the floor is to approve item number 73. And we have an amendment. It was requested as a friendly amendment by Commissioner Zatcher to redact items number 8 and item number 48. Um, how does the motioner feel about the, the amendment? No. He says no. So I need a seconder for the amendment. No. I'll second. Okay, so Commissioner Satcher makes the amendment. I'm not and Jason, uh, Commissioner Bearden is the seconder. Okay, I wrote Jason. <laughs> it was, was supposed to be saying Commissioner Bearden. Um, okay, let's hold public comment. This should be fun. Let's hold public comment on item number 73. Oh, we already did public comment. Did. I apologize. We did that. We did. Wonderful. It was fun, too. The Just for Girls lady spoke. All right. Commissioner Ballard, you're on the board to speak, to speak ma'am. Okay. So, well, now there's a, a motion and an amendment. We have a motion and an amendment. We'll be voting on the amendment first, okay. and then we'll go to the motion. But until all members of the board have spoken, we're not going to move Just forward with off. any of that. Okay. We're taking you off. Now we've held public comment. There are no board members on the board to speak. We're going to move forward with the amendment first. The amendment was made by Commissioner Satcher and seconded by Commissioner Bearden. It is to remove items 8 and item number 48 from the motion. Commissioner Satcher, do you want to speak before we cast the vote, sir? I was just going to ask the county attorney quickly. I mean, this is not the final vote we ever have to have on this. One of these items could come back in the future if a board member decided to or if there was policy that was... Uh, you know, made some of us feel more comfortable with the vote. Correct? Or, or, or Mr. Chairman, incorrect? Commissioner Satcher, that's true. Uh, but at some point, there will be executed contracts behind each of these approved items. And once those are in place for that fiscal year, the funding will be basically set, and you would only be able to make changes for the following fiscal year at that point. But you still have some time to deal with that because it's only, it's only July. Tracy, what's the sense of urgency on items 8 and 48? Like if I were to ask Commissioner Satcher to make it two separate amendments so that we would vote standalone on 8 and then vote standalone on 48, or maybe we could table one of them so that we could get more clarification from the organization than them just having to jump up at the podium and defend themselves on the fly. What, what is the sense of urgency here? It does become part of the budget. Right. So if it's... If it's not settled by the final budget presentation, then we'll have to amend the budget, if I'm using the correct language. Um, but for contracting purposes, 
there is still time. So it's two different issues. Because Commissioner Satcher, what I was kind of hoping was to no, pull no. eight and then table 48 mm -hmm. and see if we can bring it back later. And, uh, and to get to that result, no, to get to that outcome, I asked us to have the other vote first, and I was refused right. that. So at this point, I'm leaving my motion yes, as it stands. Huh. That's if we want to vote in favor no, that's fine. of the that. two, uh, you know, okay. completely woke agenda things, we can vote for them. Oh, or if we so don't, we don't have to. Okay, I respect that. Then we're going to move forward with the motion, or sorry, the amendment first. We'll hold a vote on the amendment. This is to remove items 8 and 48 from item number 73. We can cast the motion by amendment by Satcher, second by Beard, and we can cast our votes on the amendment now. You cannot recuse yourself. <laughs> All right, the amendment passes by a vote of four to three um, with Commissioner Ballard, Baugh, and Cruz in opposition to the amendment. So we pulled item eight and 48? We removed those two items, yes, ma'am. Okay, now we're going to go forward with the motion on the floor, which was to now approve item number 73 minus items number 8 and 48. Motion by Cruz, seconded by Van Austin Bridge. No, that, that was that was no, your, my motion had nothing to do with removing those it, it two did not. items. This is to a, this is absolutely no correct, sense. but the amendment has passed. Okay, but so I'm now, removing my motion because you, that's not my motion. That's mine, I bet. Commissioner, uh, Mr. I'm not putting Clegg. my name on this. I'm not even voting. Wait, 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 Mr. Clegg. The amendment has passed. Right. So now I have a mo Should he just vote against the motion that he's already made, or can he rescind his motion at this point? It doesn't matter either way. What the outcome will be is the outcome. But if you it, technically, if he withdraws his motion, somebody needs to make a new I'm motion. I'm withdrawing my motion. Okay, All Commissioner right. Cruz has withdrawn his motion. So then somebody should make a motion. So now we have item number item. 73 still hanging out there, minus items 8 and 48, correct? Yeah, somebody should Boom. make a motion that says affirmatively approving the item minus... So now we're looking for someone to make a motion to approve 73 minus items items 8 and 48. So moved. Commissioner Satcher's made a motion to approve it. We're looking for a second. I'll second. So Mr. Commissioner Bearden has seconded that. We've held public comment on 73, so we can just cast our votes now. You guys are, I, don't, I don't get what you're doing. You don't want to, you swung the Get it on my screen. We're casting our votes now. Madam Clerk, item number 73 fails by a vote of 2 to 5 with Commissioner Van Austinbridge, Ballard, Ron, Baugh, and Cruz in opposition of item 73. And that concludes item number 73. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Commissioner Bearden, we're going to go to you, sir. Um, you wanted to make a motion. I'd like to make an oh, but Ballard put herself on the board before so, you. Hold on, but what, but what are we doing about this $15 million sitting right, over it's here? Correct. So I'm, we're, I, I'm, we're Commissioner Ballard has the floor. I, I, have a, I have a motion. I would like to move to approve item 73 minus number 48. We have a motion by Commissioner Ballard to approve item number 73 minus item 48. It has been seconded by Commissioner Ron. And Commissioner Satcher is on the board for comment. Sir? Uh, why are we letting the most liberal member of this board steer the ship right now? I asked for my con guess, apparently. for my conscience. No, it's not you. But there was one member that refused to it, let it, me it's make It's me because I don't say the word woke enough. Commissioner Cruz, Commissioner Satcher has the floor. Respect. I ask for the respect and for, for my conscience for us to make the motion that no money would go to those things first. That's all I asked was could we make the one motion first so that I can vote for this with a clear conscience and walk out of here and if when I call my family or when I talk to my constituents, I can say, no, I never voted with there being any question of it for any money to go um, to Planned Parenthood. I want to be able to say that. And so that's why I asked to have the vote on our policy, which is our number one job, first. But, it, but for some reason, uh, we refused that. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, but I would ask one more time for this board to have the vote on whether or not 
any approved money can go to Planned Parenthood to have that vote first. And then we have a nice easy vote on number 73 afterwards. Such a simple solution. I don't understand why we would make it complicated. Commissioner Barr. Commissioner Satcher, I understand where you're coming from. And I agree. I, I don't want to see any taxpayer dollars going to Planned Parenthood either for anything. Um, but that being said, on this particular vote right now, as we've discussed, there's going to be a motion made after this vote that will take care of what you're talking about completely. So, I mean, I, I don't think we should get caught in the weeds here and, and realize that what we're voting here minus 48 the next motion that will be made afterwards will cover extensively what you're referring to. And that is the only reason that I'm moving forward as we're doing, because it will take care of it. But we don't even have a guarantee what's going to happen with that motion. Who would have expected Excuse the motion me, to just fail to Commissioner fail? Satcher, I... So yes, let's have you that motion can, first. Can I dialogue? Commissioner, yes. Why don't you two dialogue? Okay. Actually, that's not true. Staff only does what we authorize them to do. And it is going to be obvious after this vote that no monies is to go to Planned Parenthood. So it will be taken care of. Uh, and Commissioner uh, Bearden is over here biting at the bit to make that motion. And I'm trying to act like I don't hear him because of sunshine. But I, anyway, um, it will be done. And it's getting taken care of. It's just a couple of steps that we need to do to do it. But it, oh, it is going to happen. So since we have permission to dialogue, I'll just say that when you're, those steps are out of order. What? Because I cannot, you cannot guarantee me how each person on this board is going to vote in the next vote. I'm going to vote So for if it. it were to fail four to three, then we would have a vote for the money and then a vote against the policy on where the money spent. Okay, I, I, that is I, a since possible, I can dialogue with you, Commissioner Perhaps Satcher. it's unlikely, okay. but I think that's a possible outcome. Let's get and, into the politics of this just for a moment. Every one of us up on this board are Republicans. We have a very conservative state. Our legislatures made it very clear. And you know, we should follow suit from there. I can't imagine that any Republican would want to see our monies going to Planned Parenthood. So if not, I guess they'll have some explaining to do when they come up for re-election. You know, that's up to them. But in the meantime, um, you know, we need to stand with what our beliefs are. And if they don't, shame on them. Okay, thank you. We'll go to the most liberal member of our board, Commissioner Ballard. So the reason that I that I asked to move forward with this was because we were told under no uncertain terms by our county attorney that it did not matter which one we voted on first. I am unequivocally in support of funding pregnancy prevention at pace. I don't believe that they are that they're encouraging abortion at pace. They've said that they're not going to work with Planned Parenthood. We will have a policy in place that says that they are not going to work with any abortion provider or Planned Parenthood. So I'm comfortable moving forward, and I'm confident moving forward right now with this vote and not holding up $15 million in funding for organizations that help the most vulnerable people in our community. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Satcher. Yeah, just an interesting situation. So, yeah, I didn't ask for the vote to be held up. I asked for to do one vote first and then the other. And the county attorney is saying what we have the ability to do as a board. He is not uh, guessing on what the actual vote will be. And, uh, and while you have said and some of us have said which way we will vote, there are plenty of people up here that have not said which way they will vote on a future motion. So why don't we have that vote first? It's, it's a, an incredible amount of common sense to me, um, but, you know, sometimes that's hard to find. Why wouldn't we have that vote first? Um, we're not because the board, the motion, this motion was made first. Okay, got it. Um, no, I mean... I'm, I'll put myself not, next on the board. I'm not withdrawing my motion. Okay. So I'm next on the board to speak. Um, I just wanted to address 
the motion that is on the floor uh, and state that I will be voting in support of this, even though I love PACE and I like a lot of the things they do. You lost me when you got up here and you said that the, the reason that you were separating from Planned Parenthood was because of the position of the legislature. I really wanted you to come up here and say that you were parting ways with Planned Parenthood because they do not fit within your moral compass and your moral guideposts. Uh, and that, was, that was troubling to me. Uh, so I'm aware that's the point. Um, anyway, um, we've held public comment. There's no one else to speak on, the, no one else on the board to speak. So we can cast our votes now. And Madam Clerk, it passes by a vote of six to one with Commissioner Satcher in opposition. Commissioner Bearden, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, so I, I want to make a motion. I move to direct staff to present the board with a resolution prohibiting the use of county funds for abortion service to be effective immediately. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Satcher. It's been seconded by Commissioner, excuse me, a motion by Commissioner Bearden, I apologize. It's seconded by Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> Madam Clerk, did you get the entire motion? Could you pretty much read it back to us, please? <coughs> Just so everyone knows what we're voting on here for a second time, and make sure the county you attorney. You want me to read it? And make sure the county attorney is happy with it. I didn't get the last. I move to direct staff to present the board with a resolution prohibiting the use of county funds for abortion services to be effective immediately. Our clerk has taken some testosterone shots, apparently. Um, <laughs> Her voice has gotten quite deep. <laughs> we'll need to take public comment on this. Of course. Is, uh, so we have a motion on the floor, uh, which has been read twice now. Motion is by Bearden, second by Satcher. We're going to open up to, for public comment now for the motion on the floor. So the motion that was just read twice, we're going to hold public comment for that motion at this time. Is there anyone who would like to come forward from the audience to speak on the motion on the floor? Okay, seeing no one, we're going to close public comment. There's no one on the board, no board members are on the speaking list, so we can cast our votes at this time. All right, Madam Clerk, it passes. The motion on the floor passes unanimously by a vote of seven to zero. <coughs> and you were worried, Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> no problems. Be thankful. Okay, continuing on, our second <coughs> item under advertised public hearing presentation upon request is approval of the fiscal year 23-24 investment recommendations for human services. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I didn't want to step out of line again. So. Yeah, good point. Was, <laughs> would anyone like a presentation on item number 74? Okay, hearing none, chairs entertaining motions on item to approve item number 74. Motion by Commissioner Cruz to approve is seconded by Commissioner Ron. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on item number 74 on today's agenda? Seeing no one, we're going to close public comment. There are no commissioners on the board to speak. We've held public comment. We can cast our votes now. Motion to approve by Cruz, seconded by Ron. And the motion passes unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0, Madam Clerk. We'll move on to item number 75. Thanks, Tracy. We'll move on to item number 75. Development Services, first public hearing for LDA-06-06 R3, second amendment, sec, excuse me, second amended and restated local development agreement for Eagle Point, PLN 2303-0079. This is quasi-judicial. What? Oh, it's quasi-judicial, and Nicole Knapp is here if anyone would like a presentation. All right. Seeing no one having read the item into the record, we'll open it up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on item number 75 on today's agenda? Yeah, there's no... All right, seeing no one, there's we'll no close public comment. This is the first reading, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so we don't need to take action in that case. All right, it's been read, public comment's been held, we're closing public comment. Moving on to item number 76, Ordinance 23-96, Establishing Woodland Preserve Community Development District. It's legislative in nature. Um, would anyone like a presentation on item number 76? All right, hearing none. Are we entertaining mode? Do we need action on this item? Yes. 
it's a legislative. Do I need action on this, Courtney? Yeah. What, I'm sorry? Yes, that's action. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll entertain motions. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cruz and a second by Commissioner Ron for item number 75. We'll open it up to public comment. Anyone from the public like to come forward to speak on item number 75? Seeing no one, we'll close public comment. There's no one on the board, so we can cast our votes now. Item number 75 passes unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Item number 77 is Ordinance 23-94, establishing South Point of Manatee County Community Development District. Would anyone like a presentation on item number 77? We're going to open item number 77 up to public comment. Anyone from the public like to come forward to speak on item number 77 on today's agenda? Seeing no one, we're going to close public comment at this time, and we'll entertain motions. We have a motion by Commissioner Cruz, seconded by Commissioner Ron, to approve. We've held public comment. There's no one on the board to speak. We can cast our votes now. It passes unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Moving on to item number 78, which is property management. Adoption of resolution R-23-084, vacating a portion of platted right-of-way, known as Hibernia, within the plat of Florinia Court Subdivision. Um, we have a motion by Commissioner Cruz to approve this item. I'll second it by Van Austin Bridge. We'll open it up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 78 on today's agenda? Seeing no one, we're going to close public comment. No one's on the board for discussion, and we can cast our votes now. So that Madam Clerk, 78 passes unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Moving on to public safety. Item number 79, approval of fiscal year 23-24 nonprofit investment recommendations for adult health services programs. Would anyone like a presentation on item number 79? Okay, hearing none, we'll, open, we'll entertain motions. Motion by Satcher to approve, seconded by Commissioner Bearden. We'll open it up to public comment. Anyone from the public like to come forward to address the board on item number 79 on today's agenda? Seeing none, we'll close public comment on item 79. No one's on the board to speak. A motion by Satcher, seconded by Bearden. We can cast our votes at this time. Madam Clerk, it is approved unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Moving on to item number 80 under public works. Adoption of Ordinance 23-85, amending section 2-22-8 of the Manatee County Code and, exist, um, and the existing speed limit zones on 75th Street West from State Road 64, which is Manatee Avenue, to Cortez Road. Essentially, between those two roads, 75th Street has two separate speed limits, and so should probably just be one. They are, but <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> soon, soon, to be, soon to be one. Would anyone like a presentation beyond what I just explained? All right, hearing none, we'll entertain motions. We have a motion by Commissioner Ron to approve and a second by Commissioner Ballard. We'll open this up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 80 on today's agenda? Okay, seeing no one, we'll close public comment and we can cast our votes now. Madam Clerk, item number 80 is approved unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Moving on to advertised public hearings presentations scheduled. This is the exciting part. Going into community and veteran services, item number 81. Adoption of resolution R-23-114 to adopt and authorize submission of the Manatee County 2023 to 2028 consolidated plan. I'm sorry, it says 28. It should say 24. Is that the typo? No, you're right. Okay. It is a five-year plan. Okay. So as I was saying, the 2023-2024 annual action plan and the update to the citizens' participation plan. Who is here from staff to present item number 81? Good morning, um, county commissioners, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clegg. Uh, my name is Julia Vieira. I'm the community development project manager. Our community development uh, division oversees the entitlement funding that the county receives from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And we are here today as uh, the final step in, uh, in our consolidated planning efforts. 
I have uh, Amanda Warner here with us. She's our consultant, and she'll go over a very brief presentation with you guys on this step. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, again, my name is Amanda Warner. I'm a consultant with Wade Trim. We've been assisting the county with the development of the five-year consolidated plan. Let's see here. Um, just to um, bring a little bit of background to this, uh, the five-year HUD consolidated plan, HUD meaning the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, is a required plan for recipients of three federal grant programs, the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Emergency Solutions Grant Program, and the Home Investment Partnerships Program. These three grant programs are um, allocated to Manatee County annually, but every five years we have to complete what's called a consolidated plan. Part of that plan is to identify the community's priority needs uh, and once we have identified those priority needs, we develop goals to address those needs, and then we identify projects to accomplish those goals. So for the Community Development Block Grant Program, otherwise known as CDBG, uh, that program funds housing programs, public facilities and infrastructure improvements, public and social service projects. And for this program year, uh, the, the coming program year, which starts October 1, uh, the county's been allocated $1.8 million of CDBG funds. The Home Investment Partnership Program is specifically uh, targeted to housing construction, rehabilitation, or demolition of dilapidated buildings, uh, tenant-based rental assistance, homeowner assistance, and related housing uh, projects. For this coming uh, program year, uh, which starts October 1, the county was allocated uh, approximately $680,000 of those home funds. And then finally, the Emergency Solutions Grant Program is specifically targeted to homeless uh, programs and services. So, for example, street outreach, emergency shelter, homelessness prevention, uh, rental assistance, rapid rehousing, and, and similar type projects. Uh, for the program year that starts October 1st, um, the county was allocated $150,000 approximately. So, so those are the grant funds that we're talking about and the grant programs that we're talking about. So for the five-year consolidated plan, we basically started this project uh, back at the beginning of 2023. Uh, we started uh, in February and held a number of public outreach events. Uh, we met with the continuum of care for homeless service providers. We had a public hearing, which was a, a grant application workshop with all kinds of, of public and social service providers. We met with PATH, um, the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Uh, we held a, a work session uh, with the Board of County Commissioners, uh, if you recall, back in March. We had a town hall, and then today we're having our final public hearing. We are required to have two public hearings for this particular plan, so this is the last of the two required public hearings. Uh, we also did several other outreach activities, including an online community survey, an email blast, social media, internet website outreach, and we held a 30-day public comment period uh, that started June 26 and ends today. Today is the last day of the public comment period. We're hoping with the public hearing, if there are any other comments, we'll receive those today. So the five-year consolidated plan, uh, as I mentioned, establishes goals for the five-year planning period for these grant programs. Uh, there were six goals identified in the, the proposed plan. Uh, the first goal is to increase access to affordable housing. We all know that affordable housing is a, a serious issue and a concern, and we want to be able to provide affordable housing. Uh, to reduce homelessness in Manatee County, support health care and well-being activities for special needs populations, special needs populations being defined as uh, persons with disabilities, the elderly. There are a number of special needs populations, not just those, but those are examples of what HUD considers a special need population. Uh, we also want to provide access to community support supportive services and economic development activities, expand community development strategies, and then also provide program administration. That's the day-to-day -day administration of these grants. Uh, for example, processing applications for funds, uh, making sure that the funds are being spent appropriately, and so forth. So these are the goals that came out of all of the public uh, comment that we've received to date through all of those outreach events. Uh, and these are the goals that are included in the draft plan, plan currently. 
So on June 6th, at the June uh, 6th uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting just this year, um, the, the Board of County Commissioners approved 15 projects for funding with those annual funds that I mentioned earlier. Those are those funding amounts for the three grant programs. Um, I'm not gonna go into every single project, but there were 15 projects identified, and those were approved at your June 6th meeting. And that goes into the annual plan. So that's for this program year starting October 1st, 2023. So next steps for the five-year consolidated plan, as I mentioned, this is our last public hearing for the plan. Uh, so what we're doing today is requesting that the Board of County Commissioners uh, approve to submit the five-year consolidated plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. It's essentially a grant application. Submitting this plan is a requirement to actually uh, receive those funds. Uh, the five-year consolidated plan, I want to make a point, includes the annual action plan. So that's that one-year action plan starting October 1st for the program year 2023. And also includes updates to the citizen participation plan to make that plan current. Uh, and so we're requesting approval to submit that document, the five-year consolidated plan, including the action plan and the updated citizen participation plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, so the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, they have a submittal deadline of August 16th, so that is the cutoff to submit this document. Once HUD receives the document, they have a 45-day review period in which to provide comments on the document and request any changes. Once that 45-day review period is over, then the pro program year would start, as I mentioned, October 1st, 2023. So um, I'm available to answer questions, as is county staff. Um, so thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. No one's on the board for questions. We do have a motion to approve item number 81 by Commissioner Cruz. It's been seconded by Commissioner Satcher. We'll open up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 81? Sir, please say your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to address the board on item number 81. For the record, Glenn Gibellina. So, we're 30,000 units short of workforce and affordable housing. These projects are so underfunded that we're just, we can't even keep up with curtain, certain demands, current demands, much less the backlog. And that's why the uh, surplus property funds would go a long way if it was in a affordable housing trust. Take the, take the Musgrove property. We probably would get 30, 40, 50 million bucks for that. That would pretty much solve most of our workforce housing programs overnight. But we're not guaranteed, we're not guaranteed that. The home investment, uh, down, pissed, down, down payment assistance, 300,000. That's four houses. Our average is $75,000 down payment assistance. Way underfunded. Um, the home partner, is that part of the Homes for Heroes? I'm kind of confused on that part. I'm not sure. Uh, the project for tenant-based rental assistance needs to be increased. The rental assistance, rental and utility deposits. We're in a heat wave. My, my electric bill's doubled. Unfortunately, I can afford to pay my electric, but there are folks out there really struggling last month and this month with the heat wave that we've had and running it, just trying to stay hydrated and cool. Uh, that needs to be funded more. fp is not going to give us a discount, and I don't see much going on there. Um, I don't know. It's... It, 157,000 for ESG for homeless. We've been kicking that homeless thing down the road. We, we don't have a homeless camp. We don't have a designated park for homeless. Two years I've been watching meetings and, and, and everything else. But it's funny, we want a pontoon boat from six months from conception. We get them delivered for 500,000 bucks like that. But we still got veterans and homeless people living on the street. But let's go get those pontoon boats because we really need that. I think we need the priorities needs to get straightened. I think you need to jumpstart the, the homeless uh, situation. It is serious. And in this heat, it is, you're going to find debts on your hands. You're going to find the ERs being, uh, being uh, overrun. I don't know. All these projects here, 
could use 10 times more funding. And that's the direction we need to be going. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward for public comment? Yes. When you reach the podium, please state your first and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to address the board. I'm Richard Draper, and uh, I've been a resident of this county for like 39 years, I believe. And I'm here representing the Manatee, Minnesota Lighthouse. Uh, during EN, our roof failed, and we it's going to cost us $500,000 to get it back to where it was before the hurricane. And we service, the, when somebody loses their vision, we give them basically their lives back. We teach them how to use the computer, how to, you know, braille, how to be mobile again, all those fun things that blind people actually need to do to survive and you know, a sighted world. And I just want to thank you for, like, consider us for this funding, you know, through HUD or whoever, you know, to help us get our building back in order. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 82? Oh, 81. I apologize. Item number 81 on today's agenda. Oh, I'm coming back stronger than ever with my voice. Yes. You're in for it now. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to close public comment on item number 81 then. There's a motion to approve 81 by Commissioner Cruz has been seconded by Commissioner Satcher. No one's on the board to comment, so we can cast our votes at this time. Madam Clerk, item number 81 is approved unanimously by a vote of 7 to 0. Moving on to item number 82, Community and Veteran Services. This is the appointment of one physician to the vacant physician representative seat on the Children's Services Advisory Board. Good morning, Commissioners, Mr. Paul and Mr. Clegg. The Children's Services Advisory Board has one current open position, and that's for physician. I believe you all received the, the application information, so we're looking for that appointment. How many applicants do you have? Just one. one. What's the name of the applicant? Dr. Constance Charles Logan, Dr. Logan. Entertaining motions at this time. Second. So moved. A motion to approve Dr. Constance Charles Logan to the Children's Services Advisory Board by Commissioner Ron. It's been seconded by Commissioner Bearden. We'll open this to public comment. Anyone from the public who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 82, the appointment of the physician to the advisory board. Okay, seeing no one, we'll close public comment on item number 82. There's no members of the board on to speak, so we can cast our votes at this time. Motion by Ron, seconded by Bearden. And Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously by a vote of seven Thank to you. zero. Thank you. By the way, the reason I sort of constantly repeat who made the motion and what the motion is for the clerk so that she understands what we're doing here. Sometimes I, I go quick and I pass her by. We've already held item number 83, so we'll move on to item number 84 with property management. This is the execution of contract for sale and purchase from the Manatee County Mosquito Control District, formerly known as the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County Mosquito Control District, for the property located at 2317 2nd Avenue West in Palmetto, Florida, 34221 and adoption of budget amendment resolution B-23-125. It's located in District 2. Who's here to present from staff? Hi, Lisa Crabtree, Real Property Specialist, Property Acquisition. And um, so this property, we were approached by the Sheriff's Department. They were interested in this location as there's administrative building, storage garage, laboratory, and two helicopter hangars. This would allow them to combine some of their uh, individual lease spaces they have and utilize this location. Um, it's very well suited for them. We did have a, the county hired an appraiser to appraise the property. It appraised at 2.3 million for the land and the improvements. And Mosquito Control also had their own private appraisal at 3.18 million. We negotiated with administration and staff with Mosquito Control and came to an agreement for, to purchase the property for $3 million. Mosquito Control will stay 
at this location until their new facility is complete sometime between um, they should be able to move in October November of this year and then we would the sheriff's office would be able to relocate their operation some of their operations there uh, the budget amendment appropriates three million and fifty dollars for this acquisition what are we paying in what are we paying in rent at the current hangar I don't have that information. Um, Mr. Bishop? We don't have it. Yeah, Charlie Bishop, Deputy County Administrator. MSO pays that rent. It doesn't come through property management or the BCC. They pay so it directly. My question is, you know, I want to provide things for them, right? But my question is, uh, there, there is a rent that's being paid. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. It is. Okay, so if the board approves a $3 million purchase, you asked me to vote for a $3 million purchase today, which I actually think is a pretty good deal. But... What about the two hundred and twenty-five thousand, or two hundred and fifty thousand, or whatever it is, right? Maybe it's two hundred thousand that's going to that MSO is coming out of their budget now to pay for rent. So now they're just going to keep the two hundred or three hundred or whatever it is thousand dollars annually that they're spending on rent. That just kind of gets absorbed by them. But we have to go out of pocket for three hundred or three million plus whatever we're going to pay to upgrade it. I don't feel like I'm getting a good deal here. Yes, sir. Even though it is a good deal for the building, it I'm getting a good deal, deal, but I'm not getting a good deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't control the, their lease uh, budget. It doesn't go through the BCC. It's paid for by the sheriff. I mean, does anybody else feel like I'm, we're kind of getting screwed here? Okay. <laughs> I like the building. I like moving them to this location. I like all of that, but I just feel like, but I'm not saving the, the rent, and that's the whole point, right? Since the, the building. I, I guess the question is, do we... Postpone. Pre postpone it, wait for the sheriff to come back, ask for $3 million more in his budget. We inevitably approve it because right. no one wants to defund the sheriff. We hand him $3 million, then he buys the building himself. I mean, well, I are, are we really just playing this game? Just I, to, no, no, I want to put him in the building. I just, I just feel like we should, I just feel like we should also, you know, get the return on the, the saved rent. That's all. One, the sheriff cannot buy the building. It's not per statute. Sheriff can't buy. Only the only, BCC can, only can buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we charge him $3 million in rent for the first year and then free rent thereafter? <laughs> yeah. Mrs. DePaul, you're on the board. I was just going to offer, um, we are selling the building, though, and then making the profit on the sale of the building, correct? No, we're not selling the building. He's moving out of D2, which is going to allow us to move forward with the homeless shelter, which is vital to the that's right. That's right. That's, so we'll, that we'll cost. The benefit of the yeah. This is an extended possession, as Lisa made mention to it. We can't get moving to the building until October. If this needs to be uh, further debated, we can easily come back in August 8th. Our first walkthrough with the building is August 4th. Yeah, to do our due diligence. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have a motion to approve this item by Commissioner Satcher. It's been seconded by Commissioner Bearden. We'll open it up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on item number 84 on today's agenda? Sir, when you approach the podium, please state your first name, your last name, your county of residence, and then you'll have three minutes to address the board on item 84. For the record, Glenn Giblina, I wrote you all a letter about this situation. So let me understand this. We have a mosquito control county building that was given to them by the Board of County Commissioners in 1932. They, uh, they, they haven't paid any taxes, zero, in the 93 years they've been there. They haven't paid any school taxes. The citizens, the taxpayers, has funded that department and that property forever. You would think that they would make it surplus property, it would go back to the county, and you guys can disperse it to the sheriff without spending another $3 million of taxpayer money. They got no skin in the game. We paid for that building through our taxes over the last 93 years. We paid for the employees. And by the way, I've toured that building. They've got nice two helicopter pads. They've got special boats in there. It's a great facility. You know, they bought that property, and, uh, you know, they're going to spend $30 million on a new one. My point is, you went out there, and you got separate appraisals. We got, we got the tax appraiser across the street. Why didn't you take their appraisal of $1,039,000? He's been appraising it for decades, a government entity. 
hey, here's, here's, what, here's what the tax appraiser says. Here's mosquito control. At the very least, at the very most, we should pay a million bucks. This going to outside appraisers when we got a tax appraiser there that's been appraising it for decades, and you just keep him out of that wheelhouse? That's an injustice to his staff, to his service, and he knows property appraises. That's his job. This whole land thing should come back to the county, disperse it to the sheriff, and no monies get funded. They should not double dip on taxpayers' money that they have already received. They, they have no skin in the game, zero, other than trying to be greedy and getting three million bucks for the new $30 million building. I don't get it. Government agencies should work together and not against each other, and certainly not bringing outside appraisers in when you guy got across the street, that's all he does, and you don't give him a second look to look at it and say, hey, this is what he's appraised it at. I don't know, I'm very disappointed in this deal. It, it certainly doesn't benefit the taxpayers because we've been funding it for 93 years anyways. It's a bad deal. You should, you should scrap it, go back to the table, and come back with some real numbers for the record. Thank you. Well, that's well timed. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to address the board on item number 84 on today's agenda? Item number 84. <clears throat> okay, seeing no one, we'll close public comment. And Commissioner Cruz is on the board, sir. Yeah, it, it, first off, we gave it to him 1930s. I mean, to, to say you got this building in the 1930s 90 years ago, and therefore what's that's your basis you have to sell on is, is a bit much. Um, was it even a building or it, who, I don't know. It was 1930. So, I mean, they, they have, they have a, it's their property now. The, the, the key words, we gave it to them. It's their building. They can do with it what they want. They can sell it to a for-profit developer and build a, an apartment complex. They can sell it to us, and we can allow the sheriff to move in, which opens up an additional space for a better location to build a, a very important homeless shelter that, we, that we're all excited about. They can do with it what they want. It does benefit the taxpayers because the taxpayers also fund the mosquito control. They don't fund it through our, our millage, but it's still on your tax roll. They're still paying it. $3 million from us is $3 million less that they have to charge our taxpayers. One way or another, taxpayers are paying for this thing, however you do it. And to say, why aren't we using Charlie Hackney across the street? It's a dis that's not what a property appraiser, that's not how that property appraiser office works. It's not an MII, <clears throat> he, he's not running C.B. Richard Ellis next door. He, it, it, you, if you think it is, go look at what he currently assesses the value of the Musgrave property. It's like 2.6 million. We bought it for 32, all right? I mean, it, his job is to assess the value based upon the actual current zoning, it, it's a, a moment in time valuation, whereas an appraisal, Effect, considers what could be done with that property and what the market value is based upon market buyers. Those are two entirely different values. So I appreciate his value. His value is what we use for tax purposes, which is why everyone throws three cows on their land until they build on it. But and a real appraiser looks at what could you do with that property and what would the open market pay for it? Two entirely different values. That's, that, that's, we're, we're certainly not minimizing Charlie's involvement in this in this county, but that's not the kind of appraisal you use for this. Yeah, the property appraiser is not doing highest and best use. If he was, your taxes would be through the roof. Um, okay, there's no one else on the board. We have a motion. We've, we've concluded public comment. We have a motion by Commissioner Satcher to approve and a second by Commissioner Bearden. We can cast our votes at this time. And it passes, Madam Clerk, unanimously by a vote of seven to zero. Moving on to item number 85, animal welfare. So Q, Commissioner Cruz pointed something out to me earlier that is accurate. So S listed on our agenda here has commissioner agenda slash comments. They should be separate. So in the future, let's have commissioner agenda or commissioner items, agenda items would go where currently o. o is located on the agenda and then everything would bump go, down go look at every appraisal or every agenda before september 17th of last year when it inexplicably switched i went back and Commissioner looked. cruz reads and re <laughs> like rain man over here pays attention to every <laughs> uh, every agenda item uh, yeah that's okay yeah let's just switch it back so it'll be commissioner agenda then, items do everything then, different than what he did and then commissioner comments would be at the end where where it basically is now Okay, well, we'll go to number 85, which uh, is Commissioner Cruz's item. So I'll turn the floor over to you, sir. 
Yeah, this was, it, it, this is not directly related to the previous conversation, which I'm glad you uh, allowed them to, to speak during future agenda, because the intention of this was prior to recess, prior to any other situations going on with, with animal welfare, we had discussed, we had Sarah, and, well, I, I think it was Jody at, at that time, come back and talk about some things, and we discussed the potential for a way of moving us out of Palmetto faster using prefab buildings, and, and it was a much quicker process. Uh, it was requested by this board that Animal Welfare come back post recess with some with a little bit more idea of how we can make this this work as well as some other opportunities to improve animal welfare for 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 the animals and for the community as a whole so that's why i put this on here uh, we've all been talking about it, working on it, researching it. We uh, just last week we went and had a, I think we had like half the county staff at Nates uh, meeting with with the with with the owners of Nates and and touring their facility. So uh, I'll open it up to, to Sarah and Jody to speak more about it because I I think we do have an opportunity to do it. Uh, I hate to use the word cheaper, but more affordably and much faster in a much better situation to get us potentially out of, of Palmetto, if not by the end of the year, then, then potentially by the spring. So I'll, I'm gonna turn it over to all of you to, to give us an update on what's going on with animal welfare and specifically moving out of Palmetto. So I wanted to quickly um, introduce, obviously, um, Sarah and, and Jody, but um, I've had the pleasure of really getting to know Sarah over the last three weeks um, as I've sort of taken over as one of my roles, public safety. And it really has been a pleasure. I took a tour of both facilities. We did the tour of um, of the um, of Nate's Honor, which was wonderful. We do have a little bit of a presentation to give, if you all don't mind. We'd like to talk about some of the exciting things that, that Animal Services has been working on. So uh, with that, Sarah. Good morning, Sarah Brown, for the record. Good morning, County Commissioners, County Attorney, Mrs. DePaul. Um, I wanted to actually take this opportunity to give a divisional overview. I'll keep it as quickly as I can, but also to give you some updates. I think it's really important that everybody kind of understands the full scale of what we do and what we do for the community. So, oh, I have the clicker, cool. So who we are. Manatee County Animal Welfare is the only open admission operation in Manatee County rescuing over 4,000 animals in 2022. On average, over 11 animals arrive on our doorsteps daily, requiring sheltering, care, and basic needs. Some needing extraordinary life-saving efforts, and those efforts we provide far exceed many efforts of other municipal, municipal shelters in the state. The operational areas of the division include field services, impound, redemption, veterinary operations, dog and cat adoptions, with a core function to provide basic medical assessments, emergency medical care, short-term housing for pets, and ensure public safety and public health. So just to go back a little bit in time, uh, the no-kill resolution was adopted by the Board of County Commissioners in 2011, and that authorized a program for Manatee County to do all in its powers to become a no-kill community. No-kill means euthanasia serves as a last resort and could, should only be used for extreme medical and behavioral cases. We calculate the save rate here, that's intake minus euthanasia divided by intake, and that shows the percentage of animals that are saved during a particular time period. This is typically a systematic and very programmatic approach to achieving these goals and as a guideline is typically achieved over five years. Well, Manatee County fell short. Uh, but in 2016, through expanded collaborative partnerships and coalitions among animal shelters, rescue groups, community members, proven programs designed to, sa designed to save the most lives possible and through data-driven decision-making, Manatee County achieved and has been able to sustain a no-kill status since October 2017. And honestly, most of our partners around in the other surrounding communities are not no-kill. Hardy, Charlotte, and Hillsborough are probably the closest around. Just going through some quick stats. Here's some basic stats for the past three years. We're going to look at 2020 versus 22. Our intake has increased 45%. Obviously, we're seeing a great increase in population in Manatee County. And over half of those increase are dogs. But on the good side of that, adoptions have increased 62%. Fosters have increased 67%, transfers 43, trap neuter return 39, and owner return, or excuse me, return to owner, less than 1%. We had a little dip last year. We need to work on that. So that's a good indicator of an area we need to look to improve. So length of stay is always an important factor of us and something we're always looking to improve. But as you can see over the past 
couple of years, we've improved significantly. To put in perspective, our cat stray hold is three days and our dog is five. So there's no movement other than back into their homes unless they're critically injured during that time period. Other factors to lengthen stay increasing could be illness or injury. It's clear our medical team has done an amazing job identifying bottlenecks and streamlining process because they have decreased the stray to available significantly. And we're going to continue to decrease those numbers with a variety of live outcomes. So a small leadership team in our shelter management with a combined 70 years of municipal experience leads this team and we follow the best practice of the fear-free shelter program. This is now a mandatory certification for all staff members. It assists with laying the groundwork and foundation specific to shelters on emotional health, understanding dog body language, emotional signals, techniques to improve emotional health, and handling to reduce stress. This is also going to assist lay the foundation for the Canine Good Citizen Ready program and the Association of Shelter Veterinarian Guidelines for Standards of Care, a guideline that we use provides a set of common standards for care and welfare for companion animals and shelters based on scientific evidence and experts' consensus. Operational overview. Our field services is the base and core of our operation. It protects public health and safety and enforces Animal Ordinance 2216. Operating 365 days a year, we respond to calls for sick and injured strays and wildlife, animals at large, bite cases, barking complaints, tethered dogs, improper shelter, animal cruelty and neglect, and law enforcement assists. Since the updates to ordinance in 2020, we revisions to the tethering section and restrictions on animals permanently confined in structures such as crates, containers, boxes, sheds, carriers, anything that limits their ability to move comfortably, prohibits airflow, and the ability to sanitize those conditions. It was critical for our officers to focus more on compliance through education. And after consulting with national organizations on best practices, on ways to launch a campaign to identify and educate these items, it was determined that more of a gra grassroots targeting community centers, churches, and even convenience stores is the best way to get the message to areas with the highest number of violations. And in an effort to further embark on this mission and make Manatee County a more humane community, we have requested three more officers for this upcoming budget. Um, this would allow our field services, though, to shift even more into helping the community, providing boots on the ground in neighborhoods that need it, need it most. Much, much like our code enforcement in their community sweeps, we would implement the Manatee County Neighborhood Pets. That's patrolling, education, training, and services, where officers identify those vulnerable areas with a history of violations, but work to provide services and resources to assist with correcting the violation and to mitigate further pet owner challenges, which will lower our intake, save money, and help keep pups in, pets in a home and living in more humane conditions. So this is a case that we had last year. It was a hoarding case, probably one of the worst that we've ever experienced. Uh, we received a call from the Manatee Sheriff's Office for a deceased individual living with approximately 50 cats living in deplorable conditions. Due to the high levels of ammonia, hazmat was called to the scene and it was determined staff could not proceed in a home without proper PPE. The air quality levels were five parts higher than the safe limit. Through further examination, the exact number of cats couldn't be determined because they were living in the walls, outside the home, in the ceiling. It took us weeks to trap, but over 80 cats were rescued from the home. But due to the lack of socialization, many of the cats entered our working cat program, which I'll talk about in just a couple slides. Medical operations. In 2017, it was determined a full-time veterinarian would not only provide better care to the animals that revise, reside in our facility, but also save money. Previously, animals were transported to and from a clinic, which not only delayed care, but also took a staff member out of service to transport. And with the addition of Bishop, we were able to provide immediate on-site diagnostic to those most critical, and now we have seven days a week of medical coverage to ensure animals receive that critical look and vaccines upon intake. In addition to daily <clears throat> duties such as rounds, examinations, and infectious disease control, we now treat and have been treating for quite some time parvovirus, distemper, panleukopenia, all that would have been a death sentence before and still are in many municipal shelters. Hospitalization of critically ill and injured animals, typically 5 to 10 at any given time, hit by car animals, parvovirus, panleukopenia, neonates, um, just to name a few. 
Uh, we treat approximately one third of our shelter dogs for heartworm. They're heartworm positive. We're one of the only municipal shelters in the area that treat heartworm in-house. The Friends of Manatee Can Animal, Animal Welfare, excuse me, funds this project and has just hit 500 dogs successfully treated. We also spay and neuter all of our adoptable animals and that's approximately 50 to 100 surgeries per week. They also do some soft tissue surgeries, emergency surgeries, amputations, nucleations, all that kind of fun stuff. So in addition to housing animals for medical needs, Bishop Behavior Team evaluates and observes dogs and cats for adoptability. The Bishop Animal Shelter kennels lost and found pets, confiscations for neglect and cruelty, bite cases and impounded animals for those that are jailed or hospitalized. The staff assist with reuniting lost and found pets, provide food through our pet pantry, and resources to help keep pets in the home, which is always our ultimate goal. Cat Town. Everyone forgets about Cat Town, but it is our premier cat adoption facility that houses approximately 70 cats, space and size dependent, of course. Um, since the opening of Cat Town in May of 2019, adoptions have increased 86%. Um, a recent advertising campaign focusing on cat adoptions, it is kitten season, um, that featured print, digital, Facebook boosts, and an email blast to 35,000 community members resulted in record-breaking adoptions. In August and September, we're going to focus on the Clear the Shelter event and our long-stay long dogs, and we hope for that very same result. And Palmetto. <laughs> Palmetto is now exclusive to dog adoptions and working cats. Open for adoptions daily, we typically house anywhere from 80 to 100 dogs. Manatee County Animal Welfare is the only open admission shelter in the Tampa Bay area that requires dog walking. During times of heat advisory, recent surgery, or dogs undergoing heartworm treatment, we shrink those walks so they're a little bit shorter. But alternatively, dogs can go in one of our play yards, many with pools and toys for their enrichment, and at the close of the day, the lights are turned out to give the dogs some downtime. Dogs Playing for Life, a program that began in December 2022, is slowly but steadily becoming a staple of enrichment for the dogs at the Palmetto Adoption Center. Play group allows for more positive outcomes. After play, dogs are less stressed, resulting in less disease and less behavioral issues observed. It also gives staff a better assessment of the dog's behavior and can help make better adoptions. And now upcoming, we're super excited about this, the Canine Good Citizen Ready program. With the foundational base of the Fear Free Shelter mandatory for all staff, training can now begin for the Canine Good Citizen Ready program. This program was developed by the American Kennel Club and is a 10 skill set test that teaches good manners to dogs and responsible pet ownership to owners. This specific program is for shelters and it's to get the dogs ready to take that Canine Good Citizen test. This will not, not only make the dogs more adoptable, it will assist with lowering the length of stay. The program will be taught by the assistance of a behavior-focused staff and a behavior consultant. The skills will be taught to staff and volunteers with our adoptable dogs. We're starting with a one-skill approach that can be practiced over and over again, depending on the skill and how difficult that skill may be. Could it be two weeks, could be a month. We'll work on that one skill at the facility. Some of those will include le loose leash walking, sitting politely for petting, reaction to another dog, reaction to distraction, to get those dogs distracted from other things. All important skills adopters are looking for and we believe help keep dogs in a home permanently. So as we know, animal shelters are a temporary solution to a community pet overpopulation crisis. By making animals more adoptable and switching that focus to keeping pets in the home, our goal is to put ourselves out of business. But until that day arises, which I don't think it's gonna arise anytime soon, we're gonna be here to help. Working cats, in 2019, after acquiring some feral and community cats that could not be relocated back to through our trap neuter return program, we developed the working cat program. These cats prefer an outdoor lifestyle and we put them in local businesses doing what they do best. A working cat de deters vermin, such as rodents. Um, they are commonly employed where pest control is needed, working farms, factories, warehouses, or even private property. We have had a 100% success rate and have a waiting list of community members looking to employ a working cat. <clears throat> We're going to continue to grow and improve our adop adoption program. But our program does include fee-waived adoptions for veterans and first responders, seniors for seniors program, a foster to adopt program which has been working very well. It gives families a trial period with their new pet. 
So if it doesn't work out for some reason, we, get, we gain more information from that pet being in the home, and it gives the pet a break from the shelter. And our close partner, Nate's Animal, Honor Animal Rescue, dedicates one cottage uh, to our dogs. They actually took five dogs yesterday. Uh, this gives our dogs a chance of a change of scenery, which is sometimes all a dog needs to get a second chance at a forever home. You're all familiar with the Animal Cruelty Task Force, but we're super excited that we've been able to reestablish this in 2022. Uh, this is led by uh, Manatee County Animal Welfare with the assistance of the State Attorney's Office, local law enforcement, with the purpose of collaboration and form a united front investigating and prosecuting animal cruelty. Lost Pet Reunification brings you your free ride home. Officers will bring your pet to your home if your pet is wearing its county license. We also collaborate with social media groups such as 941 Lost Pets. We have text message support for those who have lost their pet. And soon to be launched is an interactive GIS map that will visually show where pets are found in our community and their current location. And this is all in an effort to get pets back in a home as quickly as possible. 2024, our Bishop Animal Shelter Campus will be hosting the Manatee Technical College and partnering to offer a veterinary assistant program. It will teach students skills such as vital signs, administer medications, assist with surgery, and diagnostics in both a classroom and wet lab setting. It's something we've all talked a little bit about. Um, we are partnering with the Manatee Sheriff's Office. Property Management and Manatee County Animal Welfare are working on designs for dog kennels to be erected at the port. This program will house between 20 and 30 dogs while teaching inmates husbandry. We'll also um, be able to teach the dogs enrichment at the same time. We're excited to develop this program in an effort to not only help our dogs, but the inmates learn a very important skill. I promise this is my last slide. <laughs> per the direction of the board, as we've talked about, we did go out to Nate's to investigate the prefabricated shelters. Um, you're, it was about half the county out there at the time. And we visited at Bird Tour in discussion. Um, they shared constructions lesson learned, building specifications that could be used for hurricane-ready cottages. It will not only and potentially could expedite our move out of Palmetto, but improve the conditions for the dogs while mitigating risks from storms, because we know we're Florida and we're prone to tropical storms and hurricanes. So this will limit also the movement of dogs, which we've had to do with all the past storms and lesson learns. Dogs get stressed out, um, not quite as much as cats, but during uh, Irma and Ian, it had caused even more unnecessary stress. I don't know if Tom wanted to add anything about... Is there any questions? That concludes my presentation. <laughs> You're well. <laughs> it was very good. It was very thorough. Yeah, I just wanted to give you all an opportunity to really understand what the division does, all of our programs we offer. You know, a lot of times we talk about one segment of the operations, but I think it's important that everybody understands the really important work that we, we do for the county. For sure. Thank you. Commissioner Cruz is on the board, sir. Yeah, two, two things. I mean, this is more geared towards an update. This is more of a general overview, which is great. It was great. It was a great presentation. Um, but the, the two update pieces, one, the, the Nates thing. I mean, one thing we, we learned there, because we did have everybody from procurement to property management to animal welfare, everybody came out because there, there's an interest in expediting and moving this forward. You know, and, and they gave us a lot of points. Like part of the issue we have with, uh, with Palmetto is just all the dogs can see each other. And so it riles them all up and they're in these big, loud areas. Whereas they set them in, in groups of four and groups of six, and you can put barriers between them so they can't see each other to, to rile each other up. And they were giving us a lot of good pride. But these things, like, what do they sound like? A, a, a six pack of them, essentially, like the, the little homes that, that have six dogs, they were putting in for like 40 grand for six, uh, for six dogs. I mean, the, so that you're, you're talking about a cluster of four of them with a courtyard in the middle for about $250,000. They use solar to do, uh, th like, to, to get the air flowing through it and where I mean it, the, the cost is great the, the timing of these can be done in like six weeks in terms of production of the, the buildings you have to put the infrastructure and the electrical in so so we were talking about, hey we, we can build out the infrastructure for like enough for 150 to 200 dogs and then we just build 100 125 now but it allows for future growth I mean there's a lot of opportunity that that could be very quick very efficient take care of a lot of the issues we have with Palmetto from the, the spacing of the dogs to the clean to the, the, the loud noises and the stress that are caused by dogs. This is a great opportunity. I was really glad the, like everyone from every department came out because this wasn't a, 
let's play telephone game and go step by step over the next few months. This is like we all snapped our fingers and said, let's go. And Jake was out looking at procurement and Charlie was out trying to figure out the plans. The design people were with us that were previously set to design Bishop to switch gears. So I, I think really all we would need is just effectively nods from the board saying, yeah, this is the direction we want them to continue looking. Or maybe you're just doing it on your own without us. Uh, so that was the, the one thing because that's what we discussed and you guys asked to bring back. The other thing is just, you know, um, what the next steps are in terms of how we're going to – we're still in Palmetto now. And I know everyone wants us to snap our fingers and immediately be someplace else, but we're not. Uh, that's physically impossible for anything, whether it's infrastructure or animal welfare. So what steps are we taking relative to, to volunteer programs? We were talking about the one with the county, for instance, like with county employees and, and with MSO. Like what steps are we taking right now to ensure that we're making – Palmetto the, the best we can make it in this near term and what are our next steps relative to for lack of a better term the Nates model uh, over at Bishop in terms of what we can anticipate from a cost and timing standpoint just roughly speaking just so we all know the direction we're going uh, good morning afternoon, afternoon. Uh, Tom Yarger uh, Manatee County Property Management <clears throat> commissioners um, we did go out and, and view everything out there um, as a const I'm the construction guy, so I'm looking at it a little differently. Um, the site work is substantial, um, but um, because of the, the construction, the, the, the Nate, I, for lack of a better word, the, I think they called them Katrina cottages. That's simply what they are, basically. They're a, a sandwiched um, hardy board and uh, foam in the center of it, so it's uh, insulated very well, um, and uh, they, had, they have decent size, so we can get those pretty quickly. Uh, and because they come prefab, we could probably cut 30% of the construction time out. So we have, we still have design work that we have to do. We still have uh, infrastructure that we have to put in, extensive infrastructure, uh, water, sewer, those kinds of things, lift stations. Um, but it's, it's going to be uh, less expensive and probably work better than if we tried to build uh, a total facility that, you know, that people have been building for years and years and years. We do it a little bit different. Uh, we get a little bit better outcome. Um, there's some ways we can structure this so that uh, uh, dogs don't see each other every day, so they're less uh, angry and, and less agitated because they don't have, you know, what they may perceive as a co competition or something out there. Um, we can we looked at um, the uh, the ventilation that they had, where you leave the windows open and allow it to uh, ventilate uh, the chimney effect through the the uh, roof, uh, which kept it um, a few degrees cooler than we were while we were there. Yeah, so it's it, it was it was really um, it was beneficial for all of us to go out there. Now they still have meeting spaces and and uh, uh, community spaces where they would uh, uh, I think they teach and uh, learn a little bit about the the dogs and training of dogs and those kinds of things. But the cottages themselves uh, can be put together in a way pretty quickly um, after the infrastructure's in. So you know we're looking at you know maybe you know ten months of construction instead of a year and two months construction. So. Do you have any questions? Thank you. So may I speak on the volunteer program a little bit um, more? As a, because actually on the 8th of August, um, administration, if it's finished, is planning to bring the new volunteer in action program before the board. So um, Mr. Washington has been working with staff, particularly in HR, on a volunteer in action program, which is a, a look at volunteers across the entire county. And because it had been handled a little bit separately in each department in different ways. And so this will be an overarching program that really starts volunteers in training with HR first. They have to go through a quick training with HR, understand how the co county operates, and then they will then proceed to the department where they'll get the individualized training with, for example, animal services on how to walk the dogs and, and go through their training, um, training manual. Uh, so that will definitely help with streamlining volunteers um, and how the county, uh, and how the county d deals with them in general, um, but that's I just wanted to share that. So August eighth is what we're planning on bringing, bringing that before the board. All right, thank you, Commissioner Ballard. So I I, I love the idea of the cottages. <coughs> I think it offers cost savings. Uh, it's kind of creative. It, it gives the dogs what they need. We can do it more quickly. I just want to know uh, what do, does the board need to take any action. Is, is there anybody on the board that's against the colleges or, or cottages or has a better idea for the cottages? Is there anybody wanting to go in a different direction? Okay, cottages. 
Perfect. All right. Sounds good. Commissioner Ball. I just wanted to say how impressed I am with, with your presentation. You know, my, my years on this board, I, I've probably spent more time up on this dais listening to presentations um, uh, about animal services than anything else, I believe. Um, so it's nice that, you know, everything that we've talked about over time is coming true. I think that you've done a great job putting it together. I'm excited about the sheriff's office and the new programs. I'm excited about the cottages. Um, you know, I think it's truly probably, I'm going to say for the first time in my history up on this dais, I think you're heading in the right direction. And, and I'm very excited uh, to know that this is happening finally in Manatee County. So thank you. Yes, ma'am, I would echo that. I'm glad to see some really needed and positive changes coming. Thank you, Commissioner Cruz, for your involvement as well. All right, item number 86, Commissioner Cruz, that is you. Discussion on miscellaneous development services timeline updates. This is probably Courtney and Nicole that would have the answer to these. This is just, I wanted to get updates, not only for me, but for, for the public as a whole, because we, we keep saying we're going to, oh, you, you might as well. You might as well come up, Nicole. Uh, we, we keep saying we're going to move things forward, but then they either keep getting delayed indefinitely or, or don't move at all. So I, I had three things that I wanted just to get an update. One was right before recess on June 15th, we talked about a, a project. And in that, I made a motion to pull the policy 2.1.2.8, which some people on this board vote against every single time it comes up, but wouldn't vote to pull it out of the comp plan while we assess it. And I said at the time, if you pull it out, everyone's going to want us to rush to fix it. But if we leave it in, we're going to slow roll it because it's going to stay in in the most favorable uh, imaginable. And everyone refused to pull it, but everyone acknowledged we need to revisit this. Since we said that, I seem to have a new work session show up on my calendar every 15 minutes. We have work sessions about everything under the sun throughout all of August, yet no work sessions come up on this 2.1.2.8, which is exactly what I said was going to happen, that if we didn't take it out, Pete, we were never going to talk about it. But if we took it out, people were going to rush us to talk about it. So I want to know what, what plans do we have, and, and this may be a, a, a Courtney one on this one, when are we seeing a work session or discussion on this, which this board said we wanted to have? I'm going to let Nicole Knapp take that. Okay. I think she, she's got an answer. Good well, actually, before we go too far, I think I'll take that. Um, I don't know that there's support for that from any other board member than you, sir. We, well, based on June 15th discussion, everyone nodded their head. Commissioner Ron said, we need to revisit this. Commissioner Bearden said, we need to revisit Commissioner Ball said, we need to revisit So there was support for it. I don't recall ever voting on having a work session on parking garages, but that seemed to pop up on August 14th blindly during recess without any discussion of, of having it or not. But here, we actually had a real discussion, not a fake one, uh, that, that unilaterally got put as a work session. This was a discussion amongst the board of seven people who all nodded in agreement that this is something we needed to reconsider. And now you're saying, well, people don't agree, people didn't want to have that work session? My when, did we, is, when were we going to have this My understanding is when staff has talked to commissioners about it, no commissioner has wanted to push it forward. You're telling me no commissioner up here. Okay, then then I'll, I will make a motion to schedule a work session at the earliest possible time for 2.1.2.8. Go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon. Sir, your motion fails for a lack of a second. We, Mrs. Knapp? Dick. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. For the record, Nicole Knapp, Interim Director of Development Services. <clears throat> On September 19th, you have a work session scheduled. It's your kickoff work, um, yeah, kickoff work session to discuss the comp plan update. So if you recall, in May, you all had individual briefings, except for Commissioner Ron's. He's got a little bit delayed. And then we've had a roundtable with staff. And so the next step in that is the September 19th kickoff workshop, where you this topic can come up, but it's been scheduled as part of our original scope for the comp plan rewrite. Not individually the topic on its own. It's part of the greater kickoff of the comp plan rewrite. And I would offer, I'd like to add one other caveat to that, is that, um, and I can't, can't recall the date, unfortunately, but I do know that utilities had a presentation and, and we had requested a motion to do a study uh, on facility investment fees, which is an integral part of that, and that also did not, that, that failed. 
um, or I don't know if it failed or if it got voted down. I made the motion and it was failed for lack of a second. Okay. Because we'd rather have pipes fall off our bridges. Well, that one, so the, the FIF, so what I would just say is when we have that work session, all of those topics can certainly be discussed and are very much a critical piece of a rewrite of the comp plan, um, as is the 2.1.8, 2.1.2.8, 2. 2. okay. Last round. <laughs> Commissioner Ball. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Commissioner Ball. I didn't put myself on there until just now. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get in in this. Uh, <laughs> I, I can see a bag of worms here, but I will say I would suggest the Board of County Commissioners has rules and regulations that have been voted on by this board uh, and approved. And, and I can remember I sent all of you a copy when, uh, right after everybody got elected um, so that everyone would have that. So because you need to refer to that to see what an individual commissioner can do or can't do or, or whatever the case may be. And so I would suggest um, that you look at that because I think there's something in there about workshops. I think. I can't remember exactly. And to be honest, I've already thrown mine away. <laughs> but I, I do believe that there's something in there about it. Did, Mr. Clay, I, yes, sir. I, I mean, I have the rule. The rule says the board holds them. And so we have commissioners can request them, but it's the board that decides whether or not to have them. So so it's not staff. It's really it's not, up to the board. And it's not an individual commissioner like an agenda item. Any commissioner can put an item on the agenda. We have three of them on there today. But work okay, sessions so, usually so my, are So done. my motion was valid when I just made a motion that was quickly shot down for lack of a second before someone could seat the word. Oh, there's that bag of worms. Right. I mean, I, so what you're saying I'm is just to, to put a work question session. If that I mean, was how, a valid how many people motion? up here voted for a work session on parking garages? Raise your hand. Okay. But there is one. So, so there is scenarios where you can have work sessions just based on so need. They're often done with a consensus of the board without a formal vote, Commissioner Cruz. I mean, we've seen that many times. That's why they're described on your agenda as requests for work sessions. Commissioners often ask for them. And unless there's an objection, they, they, we do them. But the, uh, here, clearly, there's not a consensus of the board as to whether to have one. So that's, what, that's all I'll say about it. Thank so. you, sir. Okay. Commissioner Cruz, do you have anything else on item number 86? I have lots of things on item 6. There's three okay. parts to it. This is still the first part. I am making a motion to direct staff to prepare a work session on discussion on policy 2.1.2.8. I will second for discussion. I think that's only fair. Discussion. We have a motion by Commissioner Cruz, seconded by Commissioner Baugh. Um, Commissioner Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I did agree at the last meeting when uh, Commissioner Cruz um, looked for a motion to completely repeal 2.1, 2.8, um, and I would support having a work session with, to discuss this, because we've had items come up, and we've one of the last times we voted down, because we felt that there was not enough information that was being presented, even in a transmittal for 2.1, uh, 2.8, and I would support having a work session because I do believe there's things in there within that within that comp plan part of that um, that we can work through and let people go beyond the FDAB where they're building at now. So I would support a work session. One, I want to get no more of it, but if, if Ms. Knapp's saying, hey, we're going to bring this forward anyway in the kickoff, is it going to be a specific meeting for that or is it a specific yeah. meeting for the kickoff of, the new com of our comp plan update? The work session that's currently scheduled is September 19th, and it's for the rewrite of the comp plan, which this would be in that discussion. Okay. That's a big part of that it's discussion. Have a discussion. But that's a discussion relative to the rewrite of the comp plan, which is my second question here and the timing of that, but that's going to be a long ways away. That's, we're not rewriting this comp plan over this weekend. Like, no. you're talking 12 plus months. I mean, we'll have that discussion in a minute. We're slated to bring it to you for hearing in October, November of 24. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Oh, next year. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner Baugh. This is Baugh. just the kickoff. Commissioner uh, Baugh is on the board. Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, I, I'm going to admit that I just s seconded the motion because I felt like if a commissioner 
wants information and wants the board to have a major discussion on something, then it should be done. I wasn't even sure, to be honest, what that code, I couldn't remember what it was. Uh, and the chairman just told me. So um, I do know that this is an important topic. I think it is something this board needs to have a major discussion on. Um, so I, I, but time, I, I'm not sure of the timing. According to Nicole, it looks like it's quite a bit time away. But at the same time, how are you going to bring it forward if, if this board hasn't decided how they want to handle it? And, you know, where's that coming from if this board doesn't make that determination? I don't understand. That's the point of the work session is just to discuss big topics so that then the consultant knows how to funnel the changes and the updates to the comp plan and where the importance lies with different policies. This would be one of them. And, and bringing it for action. Okay. Yeah, no action. And, and I'm sorry, when is this, Nicole? September 19th. I don't have a calendar, but I think that's the day. We'll have the discussion September 19th. September 19th of this year. Correct. In about two discussion. months, yeah. Oh. Yeah. The beginning work. Um, Commissioner that's Cruz, sure. um, the, 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 you know. the difference is we were trying to make this change. This wasn't a, this, this wasn't a conversation about pre, like, steps to take when we rewrite a comp plan possibly in October or November of next year, which then has a long grandfather clause before it even kicks in. This was a discussion about potentially changing a policy currently in the works now before it gets out of hand. So the, the intention wasn't to put it on a work session where we can't vote to make any modifications uh, to the existing policy just for discussion purpose and then wait an extra year before it comes into a comp plan and another year before grandfather's into being utilized. It was the intention of changing it now to the extent there's problems with it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I dialogue? You, you may. I was going to dialogue real quick as well. Go ahead. Oh, I, well, I, Commissioner Satcher's on the board too. What I was going to say is if this is already scheduled that you have this coming forward in September, it, am I understanding you correctly? As a work Because I know I'm not quite 100% today. <laughs> As a work so, session, yes. Okay. And at that time when the board has that discussion, then Commissioner Cruz or whomever could say, you know, I, w I want to put this on the agenda or actually could put it on the agenda uh, to come forward after that workshop uh, to make a decision on what to do. Is that, am I following, is that correct? That's what I was going to say is he can make all those points in that work session and then he can add an agenda item after. Yeah, well, Commissioner Cruz, I mean, I, I'm, it's the same kind of process, right? <coughs> what am I missing? Sure. sure. If, if we feel that putting something this important that could potentially have this much dialogue mixed into a work session, which is going to have a lot of other things to discuss, and we just want to intermix this in and then subsequently come back later in September or October with a motion based upon hypothetical discussions at a work session that we can't <laughs> vote on, then then it is what it is. I mean, I, that whatever you guys want to do. I'm just making a suggestion that we seemingly all agreed until we decided not to agree anymore for whatever reason. And then I never heard another word about it. And I keep seeing work sessions show up and this is not one of them. And I was under the impression that in good faith, this board agreed to discuss this. And it doesn't sound like that's the case. And, and out of, if you don't mind, out of curiosity, uh, Courtney, has a date been looked at for this, uh, you know, with what Commissioner Cruz has brought up to have a workshop on it? That is the date is there that a Nicole date? had provided in September. So, so if, that if, is the date. If is the it, commission would like, we could always just separate the two topics and have the two different topics for that day, even though we do feel that it yes. very much is involved in the overall conference plan because it's about your vision for what you want the county to look like. Right. Is there development out east? Is there not? And, and either way, we're just... I don't think we could probably... Thank you for that because I don't think we could probably get a workshop scheduled at, the, well, not we, uh, not me, but, uh, you know, it, it, in a more timely fashion than what we're talking about. So, George, I think September we ought to make sure that that is as um, a standalone agenda item. A standalone agenda item in September at this workshop. We'll make sure that utilities and public works are part of that as well. Thank you. And mm -hmm. in that case, then I will. Um, <laughs> forego my second on the motion, because I think that takes care of it, doesn't it, George? Sure. Okay. okay. Commissioner Ball withdraws her second. Uh, Commissioner Satcher and Ron are still on the board. Did you gentlemen still want to speak? <laughs> Commissioner Satcher. Just a small point. Um, not that we can't have discussion between now and then, but, I mean, we're also parallel to this discussion moving forward on uh, talks about the county administrator. And, you know, it, it seems in some ways, once we get far along and we're talking about implementation and those things, it might be nice to know 
who that person is going to be. So just another reason why I don't necessarily know we need a major vote today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, Commissioner Cruz. Okay, number two. I have this three. Number two, this should be quick, and you, we already started mentioning it. What's, what's, what's the timing and what's going on with this comp plan rewrite? We, we kind of moved it forward in January during our strategy meeting. I believe it was Commissioner Ron who made the motion. I seconded it to start the process of rewriting this. It's now July. Um, we were told it would be like plus or minus 18 months. So far, it's been seven um, before we've really started. Now we have a kickoff call. What's our anticipation, just for the sake of the public's knowledge and our knowledge for that matter, what's our anticipation of timeline and timing before we get to a point where we're having real citizen engagement, before we're getting the, the rewrite presented to us in its initial form, and we can anticipate moving this thing towards a completion? Roughly, I'm not going to hold you to it, but just a general idea. Yeah, so, yeah, because I have no notes in front of me, but roughly there was a discussion in January, um, and then we, if you recall, I took a significant um, medical leave. Understood. And then when I got back, they worked through procurement, and we officially signed the scope to begin the project May 1st, or a few days before that, and commissioners had their briefings on May 1st, which we called a kickoff, um, half an hour to an hour with the consultant, Miss uh, Miss Cor Courtney. <laughs> Mr. Paul and myself, um, and and got just your initial feedback. The consultant then from there um, went and did a gap analysis, and um, then a week or two ago, maybe two weeks ago now, we had the first meeting with staff, every department, all the critical staff representatives uh, that would have um, the ability to make some of these decisions and guide the, the discussions. We had that two weeks ago. The next step is, and, and through all this, we're having biweekly meetings with the consultant, but then the next step is this, what we've categorized as a kickoff work session. And the stakeholder engagement, if you will, or community engagement is scheduled for five locations, don't quote me, four or five locations, throughout the fall. So we're, we're on target with the scope to still complete in November of 24 even though we didn't start till roughly May 1st. Okay, so we haven't lost time per se, it's just... This is this was put this is baked into the schedule effectively. Correct. Okay. And that project um, where the commissioners can request updates, I don't know what it's called, David. I apologize. I was gonna have that on I the commissioner that. comments later oh, okay. just to point that out. But yeah. Are you but that's getting... on there because that's I, I helped him create it. Yeah, are you not getting my updates? We've been on recess. Okay, that, that okay. Doesn't, so it's that, working. On didn't... base right now doesn't no, on base doesn't work outside of the county network. That's um, something being worked on, so I couldn't access it from okay, home. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and third thing, uh, and you and I discussed this, I just want to see if we had any clarity or update. Um, back on April 18th, we voted to move forward with the impact fee study because the report's going to go stale and we don't want to spend a quarter of a million dollars doing a new one. Uh, we voted on that April 18th, and at that point in time, that presentation stated stakeholder engagement was going to be May and June 2023. Planning Commission was going to be July 2023, and Board of County Commissioner discussion and adoption was going to be August 2023. Uh, it's now end of July. It hasn't gone to Planning Commission. I've been watching the hearing uh, schedule. First, it said that it, we were getting moved. We were supposed to be August. Then it said we were moved to September 7th. Now the most recent hearing uh, schedule says we're moved to October 5th. We seem to be going backwards in terms of timing, but I'm not sure why. What's what's holding this up just so we can just put this behind us um, and, and move this thing forward? Because when we voted, we voted on doing it in August. That, that was the vote. I mean, based on the presentation, I know it was informal, but the presentation said that. And then it moved to September 7th. I hadn't heard any reason why it got moved to October 5th. I know stakeholder engagement's over because we we shut down even the link for the public to comment on it on July 19th. So at least from the public standpoint, stakeholder engagement's over. So what's what's the timing of this, uh, this report so we can be done with this before the report goes stale? So there's a lot at play here, and I know Nicole and I have talked about this at length. So, and, and I know we've talked about it as well, Commissioner. Um, this was, there's a lot that's happened also since that time. I know it's been, we've had an interim county administrator this entire time. Um, I'm acting until the first now. Um, I've had discussions with the county attorney and with Nicole. We have interim county leadership. We have a comp plan that we're rewriting. There's a lot at play here, and so we wanted an adequate amount of time to brief each of the commissioners 
So we've set up briefings with each of you next month, this month. Very not, early in August, August Early 7th, in maybe. August to, to just bring all of this up to each of you and allow you an opportunity to see what's at play and to allow us as we as we determine what the best schedule forward is. But we do believe with, with a new potential administrator coming in that we owe each of you um, an opportunity to talk to us about, about you know, the pros and cons and the, the situation as a whole. So what, what level of involvement has the interim county administrator, Lee Washington, or for that matter, virtually any county administrator in any county dealing with impact fees, what, what, what's their level of involvement relative to impact fees? And what makes anyone think once we hire a new person, take the word interim off their, their name comes September or October, they're immediately going to become experts in this. And considering Lee's already been doing this job now for seven months, so are we going to wait seven months minimum for the new permanent person to get up to the same level of speed Lee is at, even though he's worked here for a year, so he'd already be ahead of it, before they're even at a point to be able to intelligently speak to impact fees? I mean, what, what's our anticipation of using this as, as an excuse to kick this down the road since this report goes stale in December? And if we hit December and haven't made a decision, the taxpayers are paying for a new report. So while Lee's on leave, she's acting. She wants to sit down and discuss, since she's acting, discuss with each commissioner, lay out the, the landscape for them and get their feedback. I mean, the level of involvement of each commissioner is the highest, right? We set the policy ultimately. We'll set the, the level, we'll adopt the study or not, and then set the, the fee. Uh, at whatever level we set. So, I mean, you don't want to keep keep the commissioners out of the loop on this, do you? I mean, you want us to have a maximum amount of, of input on it. You're, you're saying this delay that happened a month ago is because Lee went on vacation last week. So No, she's going to brief us all in, in August. An interim for a week. Okay, but she wants to brief us all in August. I mean, are you... I'm not sure. Maybe I'm confused. I thought you were opposing the briefings in August. No, I'm not opposing the briefings. I was asking for a defined timeline for ourselves and for the public and for the stakeholders so everyone's on the same page because the timeline presented to us in April that we voted on as a board, five to two, said July Planning Commission and August Board of County Commissioners. That's what everyone in this town believed to be the case. And then it got moved without any warning or knowledge or update to us to August Planning Commission, September 7th Board of County Commissioners, and it stayed that way for a couple of months over the summer. And then the most recent hearing list that came out last week or the week before, I think it was last week, now all of a sudden moved Board of County Commissioners to October 5th. We seem to keep moving in one month increments later and later and closer and closer to the stale date of this without any indication of why that's the case. But stakeholder engagement's over. There's literally nothing left but to come in here and have the Board of County Commissioners decide what how we want to set this. There's nothing left to do but do it. We could do it this afternoon. We've all had this report since spring. Like th there's nothing new on that other than getting feedback from the stakeholder engagement, which has already been completed at this point. It's disseminated to us and voting on it. I'm asking why do we keep delaying it? And is there concern that this is going to be delayed further considering we have a tight deadline before this report goes stale? That's what I'm asking. Uh, so we know, the public knows, and staff knows, what's our timeline to complete this, regardless of what that vote ultimately is or where those fees are set. I just want it done so we don't lose this report. That's all I'm asking. Mrs. DePaul, do you think after you have your briefings and you get all the feedback from commission from all the commissioners, uh, you'll have a better idea? That's the intent of the briefings, is to provide okay. a time, is to work through a timeline and to get feedback from each of you. So we have a new county administrator coming on you know, sooner than later. We also have a new county commissioner coming on sooner than later. Uh, personally, I would like to wait until both of those people are on board. Mr. Chairman, could I just add, just at the risk of wading into something that's a little bit touchy, um, yeah. there are some management level decisions that go into what impact fee is recommended to a board because there are some high-level fiscal policy decisions about what you're going to fund with impact fees versus what you're going to fund with other sources of revenue. Those do have to be incorporated into your study. There has to be some assumptions made. So that's not to say that you have to wait for a new administrator to become an expert in it, but there are some management level decisions. So in, yeah, I think Ms. DePaul is making a legitimate point that, that there is that input does need to be made before it is rolled out to the board or you're going to have a tough time in a public hearing. Impact fees are always controversial. There are going to be people on both sides who want them to be different from whatever is presented. 
So, you know, for that, I, I'm just trying to kind of weigh in there and say, you know, we've, we've advised that in the past when we, we needed that management level position to be taken, because I can't take it for the, for the staff, the, the administrator has to do that. I also have seen these, and I'm not saying it should, but I've seen these go a while where the study had to be refreshed a number of times as they were wrestling with dealing with different issues. So I'm not sure the report necessarily goes stale and you start from scratch when you get to December, because we've, we've had them, and I'm not saying it should here, but we've had them drag considerably longer than that where the consultant had to go back, update the numbers that are the inputs, what gets you into having to go to start from scratch, if you will, or spend a lot more money is if you start changing the methodologies that you use in the study. And then they have to go and spread those over all these different categories and figure out you know, how to actually do the study. So it, it may be that it causes delay, but it may not. It depends, you, Commissioner. You know this report was saying. supposed to be voted on in 2020, so I, right? I'm, so, I'm, so this isn't like we're, we're, we may delay it by a few weeks. And it's I'm not trying to there. debate that point respectfully, sir. I'm not. And I don't know all of the logistics you know, that have gone into this that, that we've been talking about here. I'm just trying to give you my own experience at dealing with impact fees in a number of different contexts over the years where we've ran into challenges. That's all I'm trying to say, sir. All right. So... We're, we're not picking an administrator until sometime in August. Then their contract has to be negotiated. Then most likely they have to move here. Let's say they start October 1st, which is kind of the target we had because it was new yeah. fiscal year. Realistically, maybe it's two weeks earlier, two weeks later, but but not dramatically much. So, so October 1st. So at this point in time, it's on the hearing list for October 5th. They're not getting up to speed by then. So if people listen to the guidance you're giving, then clearly October 5th is no longer a valid date All on right. that hearing list. And it, we, we only have another six weeks after that until we start gearing up for Thanksgiving and, and the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then the report goes stale. Even if it's not a full refresh, it's going to take some time to redo that report and update the data. Otherwise, someone can sue us saying we're not using the most recent data on what, any decisions that we make. So there's going to be some level oh. of delay. I mean, is it, I mean, it, it seems like the intention is to make sure this gets delayed by almost exactly 12 months. Well, Commissioner Cruz, that was not my point. My point was simply to state that there are legitimate reasons why you want management level input into an impact fee process. That's it. That's it. I'm not advocating for pushing it back. Understood. But I'm we're, not were doing we, that. Were we I'm not unaware that we had an interim that we county should, administrator in April when we made this vote? It really is going to, all, at the end of the day, be up to the board and whoever's in charge at the time. All right. I thought it was up to the board when we voted five to two in April. I didn't realize we just kept revisiting our votes endlessly. It, for convenience. I mean, I thought we were moving forward. Staff thought they were moving forward. Staff spends time on this. They could be spending time on other things. They're moving forward based upon a vote this board made in good faith to move forward with something that's three years past due. So, okay. So my answer to number three is we have absolutely no idea if or when we're going to hear anything about impact fees, but we're going to get briefed on it in early August, and then we'll make a decision on whether or not waiting to hire a new county administrator, getting them fully up to speed, and then having their input on it makes sense. Commissioner, Commissioner Satcher, you're on the board, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to point out that earlier in this meeting today, I asked for a, meet, for a vote to be changed by approximately two minutes. I said, could we do this vote first instead of the other? And I got zero support. So maybe we shouldn't be so surprised when we don't get a lot of support to change things by months or years or weeks uh, on the fly. And maybe if we wanted that kind of support, it'd be good to give it to others as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'm actually, uh, to be, to put point of order, I'm actually trying to make a motion to not change things. You're all deciding to change things on the fly by weeks or months or years. I'm saying, why don't we stick to what we previously voted on? Commissioner. Uh, do you have anything else for item number 86? Nope. Okay. Item number 87 is also Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Last one. This one's hopefully quick. I, I can't, I, I, I've actually talked to staff. Staff's on board with this. It seems like everyone should be. Uh, during recess, I uh, was trying to look some things up because there were some questions about some of the topics, uh, Tunnel of the Towers, uh, Manatee, Ball Hockey. So I'm, I was trying to look up previous votes, previous discussion. Can't find anywhere. We, we, we literally built our, our our, our minutes system and our agenda system on like 1980s MS DOS system. Like it's literally folders from like the old school Windows 97. So I was looking around like someone else has to have done this even a little bit better. And Sarasota County uses the exact same on base we use, the exact same software we use. 
You go on Sarasota County's website to find information about what their county commission is doing for transparency for the staff, for benefit for, I mean, transparency for the citizens, benefit to the staff, benefit to us. You can go on to their website, on their site, not, not start with their site, and then go to YouTube, and then go to the clerk's office looking for minutes. It's got all of the minutes in real time. Like the very next day, you can go on and see the minutes of what passed, what didn't, what the votes were. You can go on this, what do they call it, an action agenda. You can click on every single one of them, and a window pops up instantly on the side and shows you the exact minute of the video or of the meeting where it was discussed and voted on. You could search, like I searched for affordable housing, just to check. It showed up every single time, not just it was on an agenda, every time it was mentioned and discussed, a whole list of them. And you can click on it and immediately go to that part of that video on that day for that topic for Sarasota. And I talked to our staff, we have, not only do we have this capability, we've actually trained some of our people to do this. But, and I'm not throwing it on the bus, I'm just stating fact, my understanding, what I was told, was the clerk's office doesn't want to switch it. I want, so, and, and uh, so all I'm asking for is either the clerk's office and whoever switch us to the Sarasota system because it's good for the citizens, it's good for us, it's good for staff. And, and if they won't do it, then you know I would like the, the board's authorization to go speak with them and convince them that this is a good idea. Mr. Clegg, Mr. wait, Mr. Clegg. <laughs> Um, I want to go to you before we get too much further. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it is the clerk that by statute is responsible for keeping the minutes of the board, um, you know, the, of the actions taken. Obviously, we put the agenda system up in advance uh, or put the agendas up in advance of the meetings. I would love to see that happen. I'll be honest with you because in the county attorney's office, we spend, you know, we have to go back and look at the record of things fairly often, and it has it is challenging. At have you times. been on Sarasota's pitch? I have. It's awesome. Yes, sir. I've been on quite a few of them actually, because we also occasionally you task us with looking at multiple counties to see how they're handling things. And yeah, I, I understand your point. So I would like us to implement that. And if they and if we can't do it voluntarily, I'd like permission to go over and speak with them. Well, with yeah. Staff. How do we, how do we, as he's pointing out, what are what are our options here? Someone should have a dialogue with the clerk. Okay. I think that's, George, the, do that. that's step right. one. Yeah. Yep. All right. By all means. I'll set it up. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Baugh to tell George Cruz to go talk to the clerk about <laughs> changing the minutes. The software for the minutes. It's been seconded by Commissioner Ron. We'll open it to public comment. Anyone would like to come forward to comment on Commissioner Cruz's conversation with the clerk? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. And we'll do a, a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, Madam Clerk, George is going to have a conversation with you. It passed unanimously, 7 to 0. All right, we're now going to go into commissioner comments. <clears throat> we're going to go into commissioner comments, and we're going to start with District 6. Uh, District 6, any commissioner comments? I have no comments at this time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. District 7. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick because I just tied up a lot of time. Number one, I have my next town hall tomorrow, 6 p.m. at South Manatee Branch Library down District 4. Um, additionally, and, and real quick, this is more for all of you, but, but it does benefit everyone in the, the community once you start using it. Uh, David should have sent out an email yesterday with some instructions about the projects project that uh, he and I have been working on for most of the year. Well, we've been working on meaning he's done 99.9% .9 of the work, and I looked at it. Um, it, it's a great system. It's going to make things a lot more efficient for all of us once it's uh, implemented and everyone starts using it. It allows you to see in real time every project you're looking at. We, there's no more question of, I didn't know what was going on, or give me an update, or who else is working on something. It, it's a great system. So take a look at it and um, you know, let David know if you have any comments or questions. He's very good at making modifications, which we've been making. But uh, I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to, to really create some efficiencies up here on this board and in the county. Thank you, sir. Great work, David. Thank you, sir. District 1. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe it's uh, on the 11th. We have a groundbreaking coming up for the Parish Park, and so I'd love to see all y'all there and as well the public. It's just going to be an exciting time. Um, and then I just want to thank the Commission for the support earlier today with 7-0 vote that we're not going to send any taxpayer funding to Planned Parenthood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you. District 2. So, uh, <coughs> Commissioner Ball. We'll miss you. We love you. Um, <laughs> over, uh, so we have been, 
we have received some opioid litigation funds. Um, I have been in contact with a nonprofit organization up in Baltimore. It's called Helping Up Mission. Uh, they have they have a homelessness component as well as a treatment component. Um, they're able to to do a long term treatment uh, option. There have been several people from Manatee County that have participated very successfully in the program. Um, I'm looking at, at planning a trip up there to, to look at what they're doing and see if we can implement uh, a similar solution here in Manatee County, hopefully with some of those opioid funds. Also, uh, thank you for the support for my uh, community gardens project. I. I know that no one else is as excited as I am, but uh, I am excited, and it and it means a lot to uh, to people in in the community for sure. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, no, I, it's a District Three. I'm oh. District Three. Oh, sorry. But I wanted to bid you farewell and say that literally every one of us is sitting up here on this board because of your help, because you helped us with our campaigns, because you encouraged us along, because you advised us along the way. Um, and like it or not, I think we're your legacy. And, um, and y'all need to listen to me when right. I talk to you. And I hope that, and I, and I hope that you'll, you will answer when we call and, and that you'll stay in touch with us and that you'll continue to advise us. You're so, all my awesome. Um, I just wanted to, we, you know, the beaches are beautiful and everybody's having a great time. It's summer, you know, all is good. District 3. Um, I went away to Alaska for 10 days, and um, while I was gone, there there were in this county, there were four significant um, accidents that happened in this county that our first responders responded to. It was in a matter of, I think, eight days. And I just wanted to sort of, on behalf of the board, make a statement to not just MSO, but to EMS for Manatee County. Um, Fort Hamer boat ramp, there was a vehicle that turned over and went into the river and there was an 18 year old an 18 year old that perished the same crew that responded to that responded to a head on on state road 62 and, and 37 and there were two children that perished in that accident there was also an autistic child who wandered into a retention pond um, and drowned and in addition to that we had a jet ski accident in the manatee river where another child died and another one was seriously injured and it's just a reminder, first of all, our, our hearts and our prayers go out to those families and to those children. But remember, our first responders, they potentially see death and deal with death every single day when they walk out the door. And they're truly serving this county and our residents. Um, they're not getting rich doing it. They're doing it because they love people. They love their community. Um, and we know that, that sometimes they end up have putting themselves into situations that greatly affect themselves and their families and their lives as a result of the service to this county. And so I just wanted to extend to all of our EMS just the appreciation for the job that they do and tell them we love them and we thank them for everything they do for us every day. District 4. 4. four. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Like in golf, 4. Yep, well, I'm a bogey player. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Baugh, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you so much you've done for this county. Standing up here, being carrying the flag, of con being a conservative when you were, had opposition completely against you for a lot of years, and standing on your principles. And thank you so much what you've done for me, um, not only personally, but as I came on the Planning Commission, and then I came on as a county commissioner. So I thank you so much. Um, and fair seas <laughs> in the RV eventually. Um, one quick update. Uh, we were talking about um, our cage yesterday. Well, to let you know that the, our great Manatee County Sheriff's Department uh, delivered 53 cease and desist orders to various gambling get places here in Manatee County. 43, 40 percent of them closed their doors automatically. Just closed. The other ones that didn't, they did under under they did undercover investigations. Went in. Um, they seized sixty nine illegal gambling machines and fifty two thousand dollars in illegal profits. So, along with the Gaming Control Board um, in the state of Florida and our 
great MSO here. Those guys are going in and they're raiding these places. They're hitting them with the letters to shut them down. I know we talked about doing some stuff um, in developmental services with regards to these businesses also, but I think the citizens would like to know that they are out there. Um, one of them the, was raided. The owner was arrested. He's going to he could face about um, five years in prison and ten thousand dollars per machine that was illegal. So they're out there. We're going to get after these guys and uh, after these illegal um, gaming and, uh, and arcades. So just want to update the board on that and uh, the great job that's being done by again by our MSO on this. Excellent. Thank you, sir. District Five Commissioner Vanessa Baugh. Guys, it's been. Uh, it's been an interesting time working with all of you. I feel very close to all of you. Um, if I could give you guys any advice, it's to learn how to work together as a team. And I know some of you think that the board doesn't work as a team, but it does. It needs to. Because everything in Manatee County is on your shoulders everything. So you have to work as a team. You're, that doesn't mean that you're always going to agree, but you learn how to be gentlemen. Sorry. Okay. Um, in, in, in not agreeing, there's a way to go about it, and, and it's, it's the word respect. If I could give you any advice, and we've talked about this uh, in, in the past, and it's not happened, you guys, as far as a workshop, there's a bunch of workshops y'all need to have. But the one that you really need the most is a retreat. Have a retreat. Sit down and talk, you know, as, as a group. Have that discussion on what your priorities need to be, where you need to go this year, in the new fiscal year, starting October 1. Because let me tell you, management, and I'm kind of, this is, going to a little bit go against what you heard from our county attorney, who I absolutely adore and trust immensely. But uh, I've worked with him longer. But everything that goes on in Manatee County, it's up to you. It's up to you as a board. Every decision that is made should be made by this board together, not by management. You hire the administrator, and the administrator is to follow through on whatever your guidelines are for them to work this county as you see fit. They take direction. The county administrator takes direction from you. So does the county attorney. And then it goes downhill. So, you know, take hold. It's not easy. I mean, most of you, I mean, you know, I've got... Three others beside myself that's been here since 2020, and then we've got three new ones that just came on board, you know, not even a year ago yet. So think about that. Think about how you can get things done together as a board. Mr. Chairman, I'm looking at you because I know you know this. We've talked about it many times. And, and you can get more done working together. What I mean by that, I see George looking. What I mean by that is that when Kevin was running for this seat, we talked about what it was like to be on this board and what it took to be successful on this board. And, and I voted for Kevin to be chair uh, in his second term. I made the motion. There's been times when I've been very proud of what he's done. Then there's been times when I've wanted to choke him to death, but I didn't. So, but that's what a board is. That's how it is but you always continue working together, as Kevin and I have done, um, because that's what it's all about. So I just love all of you, and that's why I'm kind of giving a little lecture here before I leave, because I won't be back up on this dais, thank God. Um, but at the same time, I want you all to be successful, and, and more so than that, I want this county to move forward and be successful. And it will only be as successful as you allow it to be. So just keep that in mind, and I'm just a phone call away, always, for any of you. You're all my friends. I love you all. So it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. We're adjourned.